Am I audible? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We have another three minutes and then we'll begin. I suggest you guys to switch on your cameras. Uh, very good morning, sir. Good morning, teachers. Good. Am I audible? Yes, sir. Good morning, yes. sir. Great. We have exactly a minute and then we can. Good, they just you can start being one. They just finish, am I audible? Ah, yes, sir. Sure, please go ahead. Ha. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, now let me quickly introduce him to you. Uh, am I the only one who's not able to hear? No, no, sir. Right. We can't hear her, sir. But we too can't hear, sir. They just need there's some issue. Just check that. Oh. It's better now. Please go ahead. Huh. Uh, so let me start again. Uh, this enthusiastic, energetic gentleman sitting in front of you is C.A. Mehul, sir, who is a Pakka Capsite, and he was a brilliant, dedicated, and committed student throughout his C.A. journey, right from CPT to final. He comes from a family wherein two of his elder sisters are C.A. and C.S., who were also CAP students. I'm sure in his class, we are never going to feel sleepy. Or should I say that he won't let us get distracted even slightly? All my foundation friends know why I'm telling this. And others, don't worry, you'll get to know in a few moments. Um, so without wasting much time, let me quickly welcome him. Uh, sir, I take this immense pleasure to welcome you on behalf of entire CAPS family and Shetty, sir. Hope you enjoy teaching us. Thank you so much. Thank you. Is the screen visible to each one of you? Yes, sir. Is it visible now? Yes, no. Quick, quick, quick. Respond. Yes, sir. Right. Yes, sir. Great. So, let's get started. All right. So, good morning, everyone. Hope you guys are doing well. 
a saturday morning most of you might have slept late watching something on netflix amazon prime and or what not i can understand relax so most of you have just finished your ca foundation most of you are still digesting the fact that i'm pursuing ca it's okay relax we're going to do this together we're going to enjoy this together all that you have to do is on time log into the classes and the rest will be handled by the faculty all right so good morning everyone you will have to keep your cameras on there is a reason so that you are there in the session multiple times time and again people are going to watch for this or else imagine a person on the other side teaching with his camera off can i do that mostly no but if you want me to experiment maybe some other session we are going to do this all right having said that to quickly introduce myself mehul jain here bcom graduate most important degree chartered accountancy somewhere here by god's grace i have cleared we will see that even you will clear with some amount of effort you will do it just trust yourself so we will not spend much time whatever you got to know probably over a period of time you will understand what when where why we are going to figure it out let's get started with the session quickly yes so shweta there in the session shweta shweta rajesh quick 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 respond all right so now and then you might be listening to your names being called out it is not to tell that you're sleepy it is just to ensure that you're there in the session all right so let's get started friends we begin on a very very beautiful note the future belongs to those who believes in the beauty of their dreams start dreaming big no sir we are born only for 45 marks we will work only for 45 marks trust me if this is your attitude don't even attend any session with your efforts you will be able to get 45 our objective for attending the session is not 45 it is to somehow claim 85 plus all right you aim for 85 then you land at 60 that's okay you aim only for 45 you land at 39 gone for us gone for us all right so we are not going to aim small our dreams are going to be absolutely big in terms of our efforts as well as our sight all right so the future belongs to those who believe in the beauty of their dreams start dreaming big and that's the first thing all right so to quickly introduce the faculty you know to introduce the subject we are going to see we are going to learn together the subject called as corporate and other laws sir i already know in ca foundation i had this what you had was just a drop of the ocean in today's session i will show how big the ocean is and how much of it we are going to cover over the next six months or whatever time span that we spend together all right quite interesting subject if you ask me i have personally been involved in quite a lot of subject but this is one of the subjects which fascinates me the most because it's practical it's not theory it is practical all right the first notion which you have to get out of your mind is sir i'm good at accounts because i can solve sums i am bad at theory because i can't read recall no this subject is not theory it is an absolutely practical paper we are going to connect over a period of time all right so this is paper 2 corporate and other laws extremely important if you want to clear intermediate goes unsaid all right three rules which we are going to adhere very strictly during our classes first whenever wherever however you think you have not understood a particular topic do not hesitate raise your hands all right you can stop me immediately i am going to definitely take all your queries all your questions maybe at the end of the session end of the subtopic uh, end of the topic but we are going to definitely look at those second do not unmute yourself until and unless you are asked to all right because this disturbs the entire pattern why am i specifying it on the first day itself because i'm not going to repeat any of these in any of the sessions going forward third rule peacefully eat in my class i have no problem at all as long as you're not unmuting yourself and disturbing me all right you can have coffee you can have tea you whatever you want you eat it does not disturb me just that you have to mind all right now let's get started let's quickly accept the fact that you're going to clear this paper i don't know about other things i don't know about anything else the first thing that i want you to accept is you're going to clear this paper all right no sir we are born to write couple of attempts if this is your thought don't even attend any of my sessions it's absolutely fine if you think you can clear this paper in the immediate attempt that you're going to write please attend any of my sessions all right so this is a quick introduction now we see the paper 
what is this paper all about how much do i have to score what does it consist of you don't have to write anything listen to me first all right wherever whatever has to be written i will tell you guys and you can make a note of it intermediate course 2 so if you see paper 2 comprises of corporate and other laws 100 marks paper all right in which you have two parts part 1 and part 2 what is part 1 comprising of only your companies act at one point of time in ca foundation one chapter called companies act used to be there now you have one part called as companies act is the entire companies act covered no no they haven't even covered the entire companies act they have just covered section 1 to section 148 so if you ask me it's only 50 percent not even 50 percent less than 50 percent of the deal which is covered in your ca intermediate course so you can imagine how voluminous companies act is you can imagine how big this entire topic is from your examination perspective you have top section 1 to section 148 in your syllabus all right so this is going to fetch 60 marks this entire part is going to fetch 60 marks at one point of time in ca foundation it used to fetch six marks yes at one point of time it used to hardly hardly fetch six to ten marks now 60 marks coming from just this one topic hi funda no chiller topic absolutely easy topic we are going to learn together all right second is other loss which is going to be your 40 marks now what is this 40 marks comprising of four simple topics indian contract act oh sir i already know indian contract act it was there in ca foundation no whatever you know that will be the foundation on that foundation we are going to build our floors and this topic comprises of your a contract of indemnity guarantee bailment pledge agency chiller topic we are going to learn together don't worry right now i'm just giving you the trailer what all you're going to learn in the next six months is what we are learning right now all right second you have something called as negotiable instruments act was there in your accounts if i'm not wrong in ca foundation yes where you used to pass the journal entries now in this chapter we are going to learn the reason the logic behind those journal entries what is the law behind those journal entry is something that we are going to learn here very interesting chapter the third one general clauses act arti i have a question yes, section sir. let's assume one section says he is not going to attend the agm example just example all right he is not going to attend the agm they've used the language he does it include she does it include she yes sir how how can you say so how can because they have used the language he now who is going to answer these kind of question does plural include singular does singular include plural does he include she all of these kind of questions are going to be answered in this very very interesting topic called as general clauses act all right we are going to learn this together and the last one sir law you leave sir that is not relevant for us how to read the law is important now who's going to teach us how to read law this is coming from a chapter called as interpretation of statutes are you guys understanding so quite interesting if you ask me intermediate syllabus is more interesting than your ca foundation or ca final syllabus i have cleared all the three examinations so i can authoritatively tell you all right all compared to all the other points <clears throat> ca intermediate syllabus of law is quite interesting and here is a quick summary of what we are going to learn the next six months all right so very very interesting don't get into panic mode so much is there to read no i will ensure that you read things at time on time whatever wherever required understood so this was the quick trailer of your entire syllabus from corporate law now let's get started with the first chapter that is preliminary what is preliminary anyone what is the meaning of the word preliminary what is the meaning of the word preliminary quick 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 what is the meaning of the word preliminary you can unmute yourself and give me your answers it's not going to be one way traffic first point it's not going to be one way traffic it has to communicate uh, it has to come from both the sides go ahead essential essential preliminary means essential go ahead right before starting before starting as good as before you start riding your two wheeler before you get your dl you need something called as ll which most of you don't even have i know for a fact but you're supposed to have something called as ll yes or no same way for those of you who are thinking sir what is ll 
learning license. When it comes to your company law, we are starting with company law. The first chapter in your company's act 2013 is called preliminary. Now, what is this preliminary? Nothing I panda. This is the first chapter which talks about what is this act all about? Why are we even learning this act? To whom is it applicable to uh, is uh, to whom is this act applicable? Should I know all of these things or not? What all should I remember before reading this act? All of this is covered in the first chapter called preliminary. Hi, Panda, sir. We are already scared. No. Chiller topic. Very simple topic. All right. So let's spend probably an hour or two. We are going to spend probably one and a half hour or so in today's session in revising your basics. All right. In revising your basics, because I understand most of you are from CA Foundation. However, there are a couple of you who are coming from direct entry scheme as well. So we are not going to waste much time later on. We are going to rather spend time now and spend one and a half hour in revising our concepts. Can I start? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Unmute yourself and please keep nodding as and when requested because I will not get to know if you are understanding or not. Can I start? Yes, sir. 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 History of Companies Act. We are starting with the first chapter of Companies Act, the history of Companies Act. Is Companies Act 2013 the first act that India has seen? Which is mm. the other act? Have we ever seen Companies Act before this? Have you known? Yes, you sir. Yes, yes. Which act? Yes, Companies sir. Act 1956. 1956. So probably from 1947 to 1956, we didn't have Companies Act. That's what you're trying to say. Have you thought of it? Did you understand my question? You are saying, sir, Companies Act 1956. Agreed. That is the first Companies Act. How about those companies which were incorporated before 1956? Who used to regulate them? For those of you thinking, sir, were there companies? Yes. Tata Sons. Tata Brothers. Have you heard of this company? Yes, Tata Sons. This got incorporated in 1913. 1913. 1913. Now, who used to regulate this company? Who used to regulate this company? Companies Act 1956? No. 1882. Company came into picture in 1913 itself. Who used to regulate? 1882? 18. You're right. You're right. Here we are going to see. But there was an act even before 1956. For those of you who didn't know, 2013 is something that we are reading now. But it's good to know who are your grandparents. Yes or no? It's good to know who are your great grandparents. Or else it's as good as we've just fallen from sky. No, we are going to connect with our ancestors. Now, who are our ancestors when it comes to Companies Act? Companies Act 2013 is something that we are reading today. Before Companies Act 2013, we had something called as Companies Act 1956. But before Companies Act 1956 as well, we had another Companies Act, which was called as Companies Act of 1850. Are you guys understanding? Yes. So that was the first time where India saw an act which was regulating companies. Understood everyone? Yes. So this was the first companies act of 1850. Then later on, after independence, we wanted our own act. And that's when we came up with Companies Act of 1956. Later on, we realized that this, this act had 658 sections and 15 schedules. All said and done. Great. But we needed changes in this act because, for example, Rahul, you have gone ahead and done a blunder. You've done some, you've done some criminal activity under the act. Penalty was 100 rupees. Wow. Rahul is saying, I'll do this every day. Anyways, 100 rupees only. Though. Law realized, wait, I know that I've not updated the act. Now I will change the act. And that came into picture as your company's act of 2013 which got the presidential assent on 29th August 2013. Now, what is the meaning of the word presidential assent? The president approved it and that became an act. A bill becomes an act after the president's approval. So that got the approval on 29th August 2013. And this act for, has 470 sections and seven schedules. Understood? There are 470 sections and seven schedules. Very simple. Don't worry. In your syllabus, it is only from section 1 to section 148. You don't have the entire 470 sections. Understood, everyone? Yes. Now, what are schedules? Can anyone help me? What are sections? What are schedules? What are subsections? All hyphenda language. What is the meaning of all this? What is the meaning of all this? 
let me give you an example have you seen have you read a novel by any chance have you have you okay forget about novel sir we don't have time to read study material only where we will sit and read novel i can understand your problem don't worry have you seen your study material at least have you seen book by mistake all right in your study material if you see in the index page you will find that there are chapters your entire volume is divided into chapters chapters are further divided into sections all right similarly in companies act also we have this entire companies act divided into chapters there is a chapter on audit there is a chapter on financial statements there is a chapter on management there is a chapter on dividend there is a chapter on deposit so several topics are divided into chapters all right now these chapters are further divided into sections now so what is a section section is a sub topic from a chapter which is talking about any particular subject it could be anything example appointment of auditors it could be appointment of directors removal of directors throwing out any person so any of these topics can be covered under a section understood sections are further divided into sub sections now what is a sub section now if you want to appoint an auditor how are you going to appoint the first auditor how are you going to appoint the subsequent auditor so everything has been spoken in sub sections understood everyone yes so this is how your entire company's act is divided so you have chapters chapters are further divided into sections sections are further divided into sub sections is there any other division is there any further split yes class. you have something called as clause and sub clauses understood don't worry over a period of time i will ensure wherever required you will remember those specifics as well don't worry about it all right what are schedules i told in companies act you have seven schedules what are these schedules formats to copy formats look at that whoever it was brilliant something like a student sir i have an assignment in college but i know that i will not finish it by myself i need someone else's help why to copy to copy yes or no most of you sitting here haven't ever done any assignment on your own let's accept let's accept problem is on the other side of the screen the person who is talking now is also a student all right so even he has never done any assignment on his own even he has copied from several sources so same way even you are born to copy now where do you copy from when it comes to companies act from where will you copy you copy from the schedules classic example sir i have to prepare financial statements how to prepare financial statements what format should you should i use law has already given the format law has already given the format in the same format you have to prepare your financial statements understood everyone so these are called as schedules i hope you got a clear picture of the entire how an act looks like now this is what is applicable for every act in the country you talk about income tax act you talk about your cgst act you talk about any act for that matter under the sky is always divided into chapters sections sub sections clauses sub clauses keeping this aside formats i need for something those formats are also available but those are called as schedules understood everyone yes now every act has something called as has something called as preamble have you heard of it what is preamble can anyone help me out what is preamble we the people of india solemnly pledge something that you can uh, recollect from your civics do you remember what is preamble what was that Declare. what do you read declaration what is preamble no, it's the introduction or the preface sir. it's the introduction or the preface anything else i like that anything else what is preamble oh my god look at this everyone knows Both. the preamble of constitution we the people of india but what it is no one knows we know what is the preamble but we don't know what it is wow bhuvanesh please go ahead oath taking oath taking anything else anything else think 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 what is preamble so gist gist anything else anything else one last try anyone quick make an attempt things don't happen during examination in those 3 hours it has to happen now go ahead whoever it was i'm sorry that's it all right 
If you recall, in your constitution, your civics teacher was behind your life to somehow memorize that preamble. Why? Because, because that is talking about the objective why this entire act came into picture. Are you guys trying to understand? Yes. Are you understanding the point that I'm making? Every act, every act, you talk about any law for that matter. Every law has a preamble. Now, what is the meaning of this word preamble? Preamble talks about your entire objective. Why have you even come up with this act? Classic example, when we already had a Companies Act of 1956, why did India even come up with Companies Act of 2013? Have you ever thought of it? Have you ever thought of it? The reason is given in the preamble. The reason is given in the preamble of Companies Act of 2013. It says, Sir, I know you had Companies Act 1956, but there were some issues. I have to consolidate all those acts and bring only one single act in India, which is going to be called as Companies Act of 2013. It is clearly mentioned in the preamble of Companies Act. Are you guys understanding? You talk about Income Tax Act. Every act for that matter has a preamble. It is just that you have to understand whether it is preamble or not. To keep it simple, preamble is like one of you rightly mentioned, it talks about the gist, the objective, the reason why this entire act has been brought into picture. Understood everyone? Yes, probably in the fag end of today's session, I will show the preamble of Companies Act so that each one of you are aware. Why are you even reading this act? Why are you even spending time? All right. The reason is because we have multiple sources of law when it comes to a company, an LLP, a partnership. At one point of time, those acts were not strong enough. So we brought for companies specifically, we brought an act which is going to consolidate all our old laws. Understood everyone? Yes. So this is the preamble of Companies Act of 2013. Clear everyone? I will show it to you. Don't worry. Let's get started now with a couple of other important topics. Comfortable so far? Yes. Yes, sir. So yes, sir. Let's quickly see every law, every act is divided into the following structures. All right. Every act, every law is divided into following structure. You have something called as preamble. You have something called as chapters. Chapters are further divided into sections. Sections are further divided into subsections. Subsections are further divided into clauses and subclauses. All right. As and when, wherever required, I will introduce you guys to all of these. Right now, just remember structure of an act. How does an act look like? All right. Now, you have something called as proviso. What is this word proviso? Anyone? Exceptions. What is proviso? Exceptions are given in the proviso. For those of you who are thinking, sir, let's assume, let me give you an example. All right. Classic example. Yesterday's session, if I'm not wrong, uh, income tax would have got started. Sir would have started with income tax itself. Brilliant. Yes, yes sir. sir. Sir might have told. All right. Capital receipts are normally not taxable. All right, unless otherwise specified. Sir might have got uh, introduced you guys to this. No, so what sir. is the meaning of this? If he didn't, don't worry. I am telling you guys, just listen to it very carefully. What is the meaning of the word proviso? Proviso is carving out exception. Classic example. Let me give you an example. All right. Uh, Swapna, there in the session, quick respond. All right. Yes, Swapna is supposed to attend the class at 7 o'clock on dot. Proviso to this statement would mean creating some exception. I am telling Swapna need not attend the class at 7 o'clock. She can come at 7.30. Mute yourself, whoever it is. Whoever it is, mute yourself. The meaning of the word proviso is carving out exceptions. We are creating some exceptions. That is the meaning of the word proviso. Again, don't worry. I am just giving you a trailer as and when required. I will introduce you guys to the exact provisos as well. All right. Next. What are the explanations? Anyone? What are explanations? Explanations are the thing with, when they gave notices in order to clarify what it has been. Clarify. For those of you who are thinking, who's your relative? Since Arthi, you have mentioned, who's a relative? Who's your relative? So don't ask foolish questions on Saturday morning is something which is running in your mind. I know. I come back to the question. You will realize over a period of time in your income tax itself, different sections have different meaning of relatives. At one point of time, you will get confused if the person sitting next to you in your own house is your relative or not. Trust me. Trust me. I am not kidding. Classic example for those of you who are thinking. I still recall section 80C. Don't worry. In income tax, you will come across. All right. Your parents are not your relative. Oh my God. 
Now imagine there is one section which is telling that your parents are not your relative. Immediately after some time, you will find another section which is telling your maid is also your relative. Wow. Are you guys understanding what I'm trying to say? Sir, who is giving these explanations is something which is running in your mind. All these explanations are coming from explanation itself. All right. So every section, whenever they want to clarify, whenever they want to talk about something, whenever they want to explain something, they come up with explanation. Understood? Right now, I am not teaching law. I am teaching structure of law. How to read law. Tomorrow when you are given an act, how should you read? This will not be asked in examination. Trust me. But I don't want my students to run around just understanding what are they reading. I hope you understand. Yes. So please note. Your entire act, it could be any act for that matter, is divided into chapters. Chapters are further divided into sections. Sections are further divided into subsections. Subsections are divided into clauses and subclauses. You have provisos, you have explanation, you have something called as schedules. Clear everyone? Crystal clear with the concept? Yes. Now, all this was introduction. Let's quickly get started with the law. Is the screen visible? Yes, sir. Yes. So, where is this definition of company coming? What is a company? Section 2 clause 20 of the Companies Act. Please note, now onwards, every day, you're, whenever you are attending any of my sessions, you will carry 100 page notebook in which in the fag end, you are going to make a note of all the sections that we are going to discuss. Alright, I insist you guys to keep your cameras on. There is a reason you become a little more conscious and serious when you are attending classes. There is a reason why someone is insisting you guys to do so. Alright, coming back. Section 2 clause 20. Is giving the definition of the word company. What is a company? Anyone? What is a company? Quick, quick, quick. What is a company? A company is a company incorporated under this act or under any previous company law. Brilliant. All right. This reminds me of three idiots. What is a machine? Have you? Do you can you recall? Exactly. You are, there's nothing wrong in what you mentioned. The problem is the act itself has not given a clarity on what is company. It's as good as what is a company. Company means a company which is incorporated under this act or under the previous law. The problem is, sir, we are asking what is company. You are telling me after knowing company, please remember all these things also. No. The Please note. Now, this is something that I am trying to uh, make it clear. There are two important terminologies which you will come across whenever you are reading law. One is called as a meaning. The other one is called as a definition. The meaning of the word meaning. Oh my God. Listen to me very carefully. The meaning of the word meaning is you tell what you have understood. You tell what you have understood. Understanding? Yes. The meaning of the word definition is whatever has been specifically given. Whatever has been given. You have to reproduce it the same way. Understood everyone? Yes. Please note tomorrow in examination, trust me, each one of you will falter. In examination, they might ask, write a short note or write a four marker answer on definition of the word company. Each one of you will write meaning and come back home and think that you've cleared that answer. No. There is a difference between definition and meaning. I hope I'm clear everyone. Yes. So definition means you have to reproduce it the way it is. You cannot change. Even a comma cannot be ignored. Are you guys understanding? Yes. The meaning of the word meaning is you please tell me what have you understood? What have you got to know from this entire paragraph? I hope I'm clear everyone. Yes. So what is company? Quick, quick, quick. My friends who haven't att uh, attended my CA foundation classes, you guys attend. All right, because CA Foundation friends, you might have already come across all of these things. Don't worry. Probably the first 15 minutes, you think that you know everything. After that, we will see. Go ahead. Company. My friends who haven't attended CA Foundation, go ahead. I want you guys to attempt. What is company? Are creating artificial entity to carry out business. Creating artificial entity so that we can carry on business. Good point. What else? Then how is it different from partnership? How is it different from LLP? LLP is also an artificial business, which is for the purpose of business, uh, which is for the purpose of business itself. Artificial entity for the purpose of business. How is it different? Sir, in company we have equity shares or I mean uh, shares, but in LLP we don't have shares. Sir. We have partners. We have Here partners. We have... Interesting part. Yes. Interesting part. Anything else? Quick, quick, quick. Contribute. Don't sit idle. Contribute. That's it. This is what is a company. Wow, you're learning companies act and still we are thinking about what is a company. 
think, think. I can finish the entire syllabus in four or five sessions. That's not the objective. So it has separate legal existence and perpetual succession. It has separate legal existence and perpetual, uh, separate legal existence and perpetual succession. Interesting points. What are these we are going to discuss? What else? Quick, quick, quick. Association of person. It's an association of persons. Interesting point. Anything else? My friends who aren't from CA Foundation, you guys attempt. Attempt. Don't be scared. Being wrong now is okay than being wrong in, during those three hours. So, company is the one which includes all the points like association of persons, separate legal existence, perpetual succession, and then it, act, it acts through its common seal and it's, it is a common, it's a article project. It acts through every common seal. All Interesting what you mentioned about common seal. We will come back to you right now. Whatever you mentioned is absolutely right. I agree. Anything else? Anything else? One last chance to anyone. Quick, quick, quick. Anyone wants to attempt? Artificial person created by law. Artificial person which is created by law. Fair point. All right. Let's get into the depth now. The word company has been defined in the act, but they have not given the meaning of it. So we have to understand what is this. Mute yourself, whoever it is. Mute yourself, whoever it is. The meaning of the word company is, sir, it's a group of people, something like you and me, I, all of us come together. Why? Sir, we want to do something really big in terms of software. Let's assume we want to make our own software. Software which is going to ensure that students don't have to attend classes anymore. Something that you and I want. All right. No, I personally don't want, but something which is running in your mind. Anyways, so a software which can make lives easier. Now you and I come together. We put our money, which will be called as capital, to give birth to another person, an artificial person, natural person, whatever it is, but it is going to give birth to another person. That person is independent in itself. It can do things by itself. That is what is company. Understood? Why are we here? To generate profits. We are here to generate profits. This brings me to another very interesting question. Can I have a company without profit motive? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. The answer is no. Yes, For those of you who said yes, please slap yourself. The answer is no. You cannot have a company which does not have an objective of making profit. General answer is no. You must have profit as your motive. Is there an exception? Yes. Exception is your Section 8 companies. Sir, we know everything. No, you still don't know everything. Hold on. Whenever someone is asking you a particular question, you don't get into the exceptions first. You talk about the general answers. This is the blunder which students do in examination as well. Trust me, I am giving you lessons which is going to save a lot of marks. It might sound funny right now, but please note, this is how you attempt your examination questions as well. Whenever someone is asking you a question, don't get into exceptions straight away. No, you first talk about the general point and then you talk about exceptions. Am I clear everyone? Yes. So tomorrow, if someone is asking you, can I create a company which does not have a motive of profit? The answer is no. Every company must have profit motive. Is there an exception? Yes. Section 8 companies are the exception. For my friends who are counting stars, what are Section 8 companies? Don't worry. Over a period of time, we are going to learn together. Understood everyone? Yes. So let's go back to the slide and let's quickly see what exactly is the definition now. So we've understood the meaning of the word company. We've spent good amount of time in understanding that. Let's quickly see the definition. Section 2, clause 20. Company means a company which is incorporated under this act. Okay. Or under any previous company law. Can anyone help me out? Why have they mentioned under previous company law? My friends who haven't attended by CA Foundation class, please attempt. Why do you think they have mentioned or under any previous company law? Was it even required? To include the old companies. Brilliant. Brilliant. Sir, if they wouldn't have mentioned or under previous company law, your Tata, Infosys, Wipro, all of those will have to close down their business. Why? Those were not incorporated under this act. Which act? Which act am I talking about? Which act am I talking about? Company 2013. This act of 2013. Those were all incorporated under the previous company law. Imagine. Now, please appreciate the language in every section. Imagine if they wouldn't have mentioned under previous company law. Tata close, Infosys close, Wipro close, Reliance close. The biggest of biggest business houses in India would have to close their business as a company because they are not recognized. They are not recognized. Are you guys able to appreciate? Yes. So section 2 clause 20 very well mentioned. 
section 2 clause 20 company means a company which is incorporated under this act or under any previous company law and we know which is what are the previous company law yes now we've understood what are companies let's have a couple of questions can one of you read can one of you read quick 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 infosys limited is a company hold 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 hold, hold. read the question question time ah please is note please note I know question time is not relevant here. We could have straight away jumped into the question itself. There's a reason why I mentioned their question time because this is how we conveniently read questions in examination also. Sir, I will read what is relevant. No, you read what is mentioned on the screen. Understood everyone? Yes. Over a period of time, you will still do these blunders. I will show it to you guys. Don't worry. Go ahead, Rahul. Question time. Infosys Limited is a company. Is the company's act applicable to Infosys Limited? Good answer. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, obvious, sir. Don't ask these questions, sir. Hmm. If Companies Act will not apply to Infosys, which is a company, to whom will it apply? Very obvious. I know. Read the next question. Kotak Insurance Limited is a company. It is an insurance gov insurance governed by the Insurance Regulation Act. Is the company's act applicable to Kotak Insurance? Now answer the question. What do you yes, think? sir, it is applicable. Yes, yes sir. It is applicable. Yes, sir. But I'm telling you, it has its own respective act, Insurance Act. But, but still, it is a company. When it clashes the company. them, they need to follow Insurance Act. My friends who are in from CA Foundation, attempt. You will have to wage your own wars. Please attempt. You will have to be there. Attempt, attempt. Sir, unless and until insurance act mentions it is not valid it is valid sir under company if insurance act says it is not valid will you follow insurance act or companies act insurance act sir you'll follow insurance act all right for anything this else? sir anything else quick 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 go ahead friends attempt right wrong don't bother don't be scared of making mistakes let's do it together Sir, oh. uh, if Insurance Act is uh, silent in some uh, situations, then the Companies Act is uh, relevant. Let's assume it is not silent. It is talking about something. Let's assume Insurance Act says you have to follow WDV method of depreciation and Companies Act says you follow SLM. Which one will you follow? Insurance Act. Don't insurance you. Act. But you're a company. I've mm -hmm. clearly mentioned Kotak Insurance is a company. So it is registered as But a it has a special act, sir. It has its special act. Agreed. Navadeep, go ahead. So it is uh, registered as a company. So it has to be, it is just governed by the rules of insurance regulation. So which one should I follow, sir? Now I'm giving you a classic okay. example, depreciation. Companies Act says you have to follow SLM. Your insurance act is saying you have to follow WDV. Which one will you follow? You are a company, but you are an insurance company. Which one will you follow? WDV. WDV. And WDV is as per? Insurance Act. Why insurance not Companies Act? Act? Who is giving you the right to override Companies Act itself? Companies Act. No, companies Act itself is giving you the right to override Companies Act. It's Insurance Act. Insurance Act is telling you to override. Indian government, sir. Indian government. Sir, you keep aside everything. Indian government is giving me the right. You please override that. Fair enough. I am not answering this question still. Hold on. Read the next question. Quick. Axis Bank is a company. It is a banking company governed by the Banking Regulation Act. Is the company's act applicable to Axis Bank? Attempt, attempt, attempt. My yes, friends who are yes, in from yes, 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 is the company's act applicable? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, but I'm telling you, Banking Regulation Act is existing and it has to follow Banking Regulation Act. Now, which one should I follow? You're telling yes for everything. Banking that is the problem. It has banking to follow Banking Regulation Act. Yes, sir. Then why am I even calling myself as a company? That means you're trying to say, sir, Banking Regulation Act is over, uh, is going to override Companies Act. If the provisions are inconsistent with the Banking Regulation Act, then we will follow Companies Act. Then you're going to follow Companies Act. Interesting, yeah. interesting, interesting. My friends who haven't followed whatever Abhishek mentioned, he just said, sir, in case if there's a cliff, if there's a if there's a fight in the provision, if there's a conflict in the provision, you follow Companies Act. Don't follow Insurance Act or Banking Regulation Act. You follow Companies Act. Right, wrong. We are going to learn together. Next question. Reliance Power Limited is a company. It is an electricity generation and supply company governed by the Electricity Act. 
is the companies act applicable to reliance power what do you think yes sir it is yes. applicable yes sir yes, follow electricity yes. act sir uh, electricity act or which one should i follow for its electricity. operation it must follow electricity act sir for it for operations have to follow electricity act for for what will i follow companies act then no for everything they have to follow the electricity act if there is any inconsistency then they go for companies act agreed all right right wrong i'm not saying anything right now let's answer the law is there a section which gives the answer yes let's learn the section now can i start friends yes for my ca foundation friends hold on those of you thinking sir we know all of this just give me 15 20 minutes i will show how much of it we know all right don't worry i'll ensure you will not get bored every class has something or the other to teach the first session i have to keep it as a foundation companies which are incorporated under this act or under any previous law have to follow companies act now i am talking about section 1 section 1 says applicability of this act to whom all is this act applicable the first thing companies act is applicable to all those companies which are incorporated under this act which is your companies act of 2013 or any other previous company law so it could be 1956 or it could be 1850 clear everyone yes second is it applicable to insurance company the answer is yes companies act is applicable to insurance company companies act is applicable to banking companies companies act is applicable to a company which is engaged in generation or supply of electricity but wait this section itself says when it comes to an insurance act insurance company i know that you have your own act called as insurance act when it comes to a banking company i know that you have your own act called as banking regulation act when it comes to your company which is engaged in generation or supply of electricity i know that you have your own act called as electricity act now the confusion is which one should i follow my friends who are from christ college you will be thinking which father how many fathers do i have let's assume you have two fathers one who is in college the other one at home whom should you listen to law says law says whenever there is any inconsistency inconsistency between what between companies act and your respective act whenever there is any inconsistency section 1 of companies act itself is giving you the power the option of following your respective act all right so let's assume insurance act says you have to follow slm and companies act is saying you have to follow wdv assume now there is a war there is a fight there is a conflict because as a company what will you follow are you supposed to follow insurance act or companies act which one should i follow law itself says companies act itself is giving an answer to it it says whenever there is any such inconsistent provisions whenever there is such fights you follow your respective act and which is your respective act insurance act understood yes when it comes to an insurance company it's going to be insurance act or in irda when it comes to a banking company it becomes your banking regulation act when it comes to a company which is engaged in generation or supply of electricity it becomes your Insur electricity act understood everyone yes so when it comes to section 1 of companies act it says sir companies act is applicable to all the companies it is applicable to insurance company it is applicable to banking company it is applicable to your company which is in electricity supply or generation however however if there is any fight between the provision if one act is saying do this and the other act is saying do that which one will you follow companies act itself is resolving this problem companies act itself is giving the solution by saying you follow your respective bap who's your respective bap in case of insurance company it becomes your insurance act in case of banking company it becomes your banking regulation act in case of electricity supply and generation company it becomes your electricity act understood everyone understood everyone crystal clear with the concept yes or no abhishek everyone quick yes sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. yes sir yes sir yes sir are you guys enjoying yes sir yes. all right let's quickly yes, get into the next point companies act is also applicable to all those companies which are governed by special act for the time being in force example lic what is lic have you heard of this company called as lic 100% life insurance, right? life insurance. insurance corporation life is it a company insurance. yes it is a company is it a company yes it is a company now which act is it brought into existence it's been brought into existence by the lic act all right a separate act was passed in the parliament which is called as the lic act and this act brought into picture this company called as lic is companies act applicable to lic the answer is yes 
it is applicable to LIC also. However, whenever there is any fight between the provisions of LIC Act and Companies Act, which one will you follow? follow LIC Act. LIC. 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 LIC Act. Who's giving an answer to this? Companies, Companies Act, Act itself. <laughs> Companies Act Companies. itself is telling you follow your respective BAP. I hope I'm clear, everyone. Understood? Yes. Apart from this, any other body corporate which is which is brought into picture, any uh, any other entity which is brought into picture by any act, then all of those will also be governed by your Companies Act. Understood? Yes. So this is your quick applicability section one. Now, for those of you who aren't aware of the characteristics of companies, let's quickly spend five minutes on this. We are not going to spend much time. Characteristics of company. All my friends were saying corporate personality. Is company a separate person? The answer is yes. It is a separate person which can enter into transaction in its own name, have its own seal, have its own assets. Understood? So this is the first characteristic. Second, company is an artificial person. Very important. Is it a person? The answer is yes. Example, Infosys. Is Infosys, is, a, <coughs> is Infosys a person? The answer is yes, it is a person. Is it a natural person like you and me? The answer is no. It's an artificial person. Third, company is a citizen. Do you think so? Is company a citizen? No, sir. No, sir. My friends, my friends who aren't from CA Foundation, please make an attempt. Is company a citizen? Infosys, Wipro, Wipro is an Indian company. Am I trying to say it's an Indian citizen? Right, wrong, don't bother. Make mistakes no, sir. now. No, it's not a citizen. Sir. It's not an Indian company. It is an Indian company. I've told you, Infosys is an Indian company. But it's it an not Indian a natural person, sir, which can't put in jail or can't marry. So for citizenship, you have to marry? <laughs> wow. Sir, I'm saying natural person. Natural person. Agree. Fair point. Anything else? Anything else? But when I'm saying Infosys is an Indian person, if it is not a citizen, what am I, how can I say it's an Indian person? What am I referring to? Residential status. Financial status? No. Residential status. Residential status? No. Created by Registered company. Registered company, the answer is no. When I'm saying Wipro is an Indian company, Reliance is an Indian company, you're saying it is not a citizen. Then what is it? Residential status? No. country where it is incorporated. Nationality. Is nationality. Please note there are two different words. One is nationality, the other one is citizenship. Companies do not get citizenship. Like Chandramali rightly mentioned, sir, please note for citizenship, usually you have to be a natural person. All right, usually there's a separate act called a citizenship act. All right. Now, who is saying company is not a citizen? When I say company cannot become a citizen, when I say Infosys is an Indian company, this Indian does not mean citizenship. Who is giving this answer? Companies Act? Is Companies Act saying so? Answer is no. It's coming from another act called as Citizenship Act. Are you guys understanding? Yes. So clause 2F of Citizenship Act of 1955 says companies will never get citizenship status. All right. It will never say it will never get citizenship. So when I say Infosys is an Indian company, what am I referring to? I'm referring to its nationality. Understood everyone? Yes. To which country does it really belong to? That is called as nationality. I hope I'm clear everyone. Does it have its own residence? Answer is yes. Where is it from? It's coming from your residence. Understood everyone? Yes. Limited liability. What is the concept of limited liability? Anyone? Quick, quick, quick. My friends who aren't from CA Foundation, make an attempt. Quick. The company limited liability? limited liability means the company uh, liability is limited to the extent of what they have. Interesting. Now, is it the liability of the company? Sir, shareholders' liability, liability is limited to unpaid. It's liability of the company, not of the members. It's the liability of the company and not the liability of the members. When I say limited liability, whose liability is limited? Whom are you talking about? Company or members? Shareholders. 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 Is shareholders and members one and the same? Couple of you said shareholders. Someone said members. Someone said company, complete veil puri. Let's resolve this. Can you see on the screen? Which cartoon character is this? Quick, 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 quick. Chota Bean. Ah, all of my mature friends who thinks you're too mature, I can't name cartoon characters in the class. Please keep all your maturity aside and come with an open mind when you're learning. So what am I trying to say? There's a company called as Chota Bean Company Limited. Same example. My CA Foundation friends should be able to appreciate. Nothing new. All right. Just for next 15 minutes. Hold on. So, 
There's a share of 10 rupees. Assume. All right. Tejaswini, you have a share of 10 rupees. You paid 6 rupees. Tomorrow, the company has to pay 1 crore to its creditors. How much is your liability? 4, 10. 10, four 6, 4, rupees. 1 crore. 4 rupees. 4 rupees. Four rupees. Only 4, four rupees. rupees. Why? But the company has to pay 1 crore, right? Unpaid amount. Your answer is limited liability. The reason is limited liability. Your liability will be limited only to the extent of the amount that you have not paid. As simple as that. Out of 10 rupees, you have paid 6 rupees in the past. Tomorrow, even if the company has to pay crores together, that's not your headache. Your liability is only limited to the extent of 4 rupees. Understood everyone? Understood everyone? Yes. So, this yes. is a quick example. Can there be unlimited liability? Can there be an exception to limited liability? That's nothing but unlimited liability. Yes, sir. Yes, no. When, yes, do, when sir. do you think when do you think I can have unlimited liability? When do you think I can have unlimited liability? For now. When we have some... Now all my CA Foundation friends who think that you know companies act, please attempt. So when us. we have the sufficient funds to pay. <laughs> Then we are sure that we hold, 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 hold on. Raise your hands, make it easier. If you have something to add, please raise your hands. My question is very simple. Sir, we have seen that companies have a characteristic called limited liability. What is the meaning of the word limited liability? My liability will be limited only to the extent of the amount that I have not paid. Out of 10 rupees, 6 rupees I have already paid in the past. The company has to pay 1 crore. Is my liability 1 crore? The answer is no, your liability is 4 rupees. This is the concept of limited liability. Yes. Now my question is, are there any exceptions to this concept of limited liability? Right, wrong, don't bother. Raise your hands. Let's all learn together. Friends, please don't be hesitant in making mistakes. Learn. We are all here to learn. All right. Make mistakes. That's absolutely fine. Uh, I'll go in the same sequence. Rahul, Arti, Divya, Chandramoli, Divya. Again, quick. Sir, yeah, when they have broken any law or something like that. When they have broken any law, liability becomes unlimited. And even in the case of unlimited companies. Even in case of unlimited company. I'll come back to unlimited company later on. I knew that unlimited company concept will come up. Anything else? Arti, Divya, Chandramoli, Divya. Sir, I remember the example of company Ampe uh, that has unlimited liability. And uh, when they are sure they have enough profits and... Uh, uh, they'll not turn up with this uh, unlimited liability. They are sure that they pay the amount, it is unlimited liability. You're giving an example of unlimited company. I'll come back to you later on. Divya, go ahead. Sir, when the company is incorporated by providing false information, then the entire uh, uh, the member is... Uh... Brilliant point, brilliant point. I'll come back to you. Very interesting point. So, so Divya's answer is, Sir, congratulations, company has taken birth. Congratulations, you've become parents. All right, your company has taken birth. Now, when you incorporated the company, when you brought this company into existence, you've given false information. Possible? 100% possible. 100% possible. Law says, at the time of incorporation, by mistake, if you've done the mistake of giving false information, your liability is not limited. It becomes unlimited. In detail, I will take you through. Hold on. Go ahead, Chandra Mali. Same point, sir. Right? Same point. Anything else anyone wants to add? Divya Deepa, go ahead quick. So, when the profits and revenues are so high, they convert themselves into an unlimited liability. When the profits are high, they convert themselves into unlimited company. That means they are expanding their business. There are peaks. Let me correct this. Not every company would want to become unlimited company. Classic example, Reliance. Infosys, Wipro, Tata, all are profit making. Are they unlimited company? The answer is no, they are limited company. For my friends who haven't understood head and tail of whatever I've discussed, it's for you guys. Listen to me very carefully. Sit straight everyone and switch on your cameras. I insist you to switch on your camera. There's a reason or else I will leave it to you guys. What is the concept of limited liability? Limited liability means liability is limited. Tomorrow anything happens. Company has to pay crores together. Is it your headache? No. It's the headache of the company. You have to pay how much you have not paid. Let's assume it's a 10 rupee shares. Alright. 6 rupees you have paid in the past. You have not paid 4 rupees. Tomorrow let's assume the company is winding up. It has to pay crores to its creditors. 
can the company come and ask you to pay crores the answer is no it will ask you to pay only the amount that you have not paid understood pratiksha there in the session yes second point is there a concept of unlimited company the answer is yes right now i'm not talking about unlimited company right now i'm talking about exceptions to the concept of limited liability can there be a possibility where it is a limited company with limited liability but in few circumstances the liability can become unlimited are there such circumstances the answer is yes there are a few circumstances let's learn what are those circumstances can i start can i start yes sir the first one if a member has wrongly represented the company or has provided wrong information false information then he becomes personally liable for such acts if you have gone ahead and given wrong information if you have given false information if you have represented the company in an inappropriate manner your liability is no more limited it becomes unlimited liability understood everyone understood everyone now for those of you who haven't got the point yet i am talking about situations in which your liability which was limited will become unlimited now i am talking about situations in which it is a limited company it is a limited liability but there are a few circumstances in which your limited liability will become unlimited understood everyone so this is the first point second point when you were giving birth to the company when you were incorporating the company at that time if you give false information incorrect information if you have given fake documents section 7 subsection 7 section 7 subsection 7 100% focus 100% focus section 7 subsection 7 says your liability will not remain unlimited it will become unlimited in that case it will not remain limited it will become unlimited understood everyone understood everyone yes third situation tomorrow when the company is winding up i'm closing the company xyz reasons whatever the reason is i'm closing the company it appears that the company is carried out to defraud the creditors the tribunal may make all the members liable for the debt what is the meaning of this i am closing down this company and to the courts it appeared that you were operating you were doing your business why so that i can defraud the creditors i can carry out a fraud to the uh, to the creditors of the company if that was your intention then all the members not just one or two all the members of the company will be liable for the debt and it becomes unlimited are you guys understanding are you guys understanding so three situations we have spoken about first one wrong representations providing false information second situation where you were incorporated by giving false information third one in the course of winding up where it appears that the company is carried out only to defraud creditors the tribunal may make all the members liable for debt understood i'll take all the questions hold on next point if in the prospectus has been issued with the intent to defraud the applicants or false information has been given in the prospectus members become personally liable what is prospectus anyone what is prospectus sign invitation, invitation to sign for those of you who are not able to connect do you remember your old good old college days immediately after your 10th after your sslc you might have gone to different colleges and the colleges might have given you prospectus what was that it was an invitation by the college please come and take admission in my college yes or no similarly when a company is going to raise money it wants to raise money from the public it will give an application it will give an advertisement it will give a pamphlet to the company to the entire world please see this is my company these are my details you please come and become member in my company understood this is the concept of prospectus understood everyone understood everyone in the prospectus if you have given wrong information if you have given false information you know your college is not good but still most of the colleges give that they are the best college in the city yes or no yes or no similarly similarly in case if you know your company is not doing well but still if you give false information in your prospectus you will be covered under unlimited liability understood the liability becomes unlimited understood everyone understood everyone yes for my friends who are counting stars what is unlimited what is unlimited liability the meaning of the word unlimited liability means tomorrow anything happens sell your personal property 
sell your kidney, pancreas, whatever it is, you sell, you do whatever it is, bring money and repay the creditors. Understood? Understood? This is the concept of unlimited company. Understood everyone? Yes or no? Unlimited liability. Yes, sir. The members and shareholders are the same. I'll come back. No, it isn't. I'll come back. Hold on, hold on, hold on. The last point, the last point, where you fail to repay deposits which you have taken from public. You've taken money from public and if you're not able to repay on time and where it appears that you're intentionally not repaying, you have money but you don't want to repay. Because of XYZ reasons, you're not repaying. Liability becomes unlimited, personally liable. Understood friends? There are five scenarios that we've spoken about where the liability is unlimited. 100% focus important from exam perspective. This can come as a question for four mark, right? Short note, all right? The first point is where you have wrongly represented or given false information. Second point is where you're incorporated by giving false information. Third point is where the company is carried out to defraud the creditors. I'm existing only to defraud the creditors. Fourth point, where you have given wrong information in the prospectus. Fifth point, where you have not repaid your deposits, you have money, but you're doing it purposely, intentionally you're not repaying your deposit. All of these will lead to personal liability. What is the meaning of the word personal liability? Unlimited liability. You sell your personal assets, bring in money and repay to the creditors. Understood everyone? Understood everyone? Crystal clear with the concept? Yes, no. Yes, yes or no? Quick. Yes, Next. sir. Yes, sir. Next characteristic. I know I have to give you the difference between member and uh, company. I will come back. Hold on. Let's quickly see a couple of other characteristics. Perpetual succession. What is the meaning of this? Men may come, men may go, but company goes on forever. Classic example. Mr. Dhirubhai Ambani, the one who started Reliance, expired. Reliance closed? Reliance no, closed? Sir. It's no, sir. Well, better than what it was. Why? Because of the concept of perpetual succession. Men may come, men may go, but company goes on forever. All right. Separate property. All right. Rahul, very interesting. He says, sir, company and members are one and the same. First point. Is it so? Is company and members one and the same? The answer is no. Company no. is separate. Members are separate. But whatever is of the company belongs to the members. Yes or no? That's your ideology. That's what you are thinking. So what Rahul does is very interesting. He takes one share in all the companies of the country. All right. In the country, let's assume there are 1,000 companies. He takes one one share in all the 1,000 companies. Why? Whatever belongs to the company belongs to the member. Wow. Do you think it makes sense? Do you think is it possible? Infosys has crores together, property worth crores together. I'll take one share of Infosys and say, whatever is Infosys property, that is my property. Do you think it makes sense? Do you think it makes sense? Why? It does not make sense because of the reason separate property because of the feature called separate property. Whatever is the property of the company is not the property of the members. It is separate. Both of them have separate properties. Tomorrow, if anything happens, when the company is closing down, after you repay everything, everyone else, whatever is left, that is yours. Until and unless the company is wound up, company's property is separate from members. Understood everyone? Understood everyone? The next point, transferability of shares. Can I transfer? Check. I want to transfer my shares to you. Congratulations. First of all, chair is thinking, why? Assume. I want to transfer. Is it okay? Transfer. Who is stopping you? This is the biggest advantage of a company. This is the biggest fundamental feature of a company. Understood? So you can transfer shares easily from one person to another person. Capacity to sue and be sued. Let's assume you were eating Cadbury's. All right. Most of you are hungry already. Let's assume you were eating Cadbury's. You find some small ants, you find some small worms out of your Cadbury's silk. Now are you hungry? I don't know if you are, something is wrong with you. All right. Let's assume you found. Can you file a case against the company? Mondelez. The name of the company is Mondelez. Can you file a case against the company? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes. Case one. Can you file a case against the company? The answer is yes. Can the company file a case against you because of XYZ reasons? Yes. No problem. Why? Where is this feature coming? This feature is coming from capacity to sue and be sued. Understood everyone? Mute yourself. Mute yourself, Omar. Yes, yes. All right. The next one. Contractual right. Can a company enter into contracts? Infosys wants to buy, uh, buy uh, property, say, right next to your house. Can it buy? 
answer is yes yeah. it can enter into contracts it can do anything uh, like an individual does you and i can do the same thing even a company can do all right probably a couple of uh, features limitation of action can i do anything and everything since i'm a company can i do anything and everything that i want the answer is no you have to do whatever has been mentioned in the companies act you cannot go beyond what is given in your memorandum of association what is moa anyone what is moa attempt attempt what is moa what is memorandum of association charter of a company, of company. it is charter of company like one of you rightly mentioned it is the pap of the company if you ask me all right can you go beyond your dad whatever dad says can you do no, go sir. ahead and do something beyond no, as long as you want to stay with him you can after that you know what is to be done as simple as that understood same way you can't go beyond your memorandum of association you have to ensure that you are doing whatever has been mentioned in the memorandum of association you can't go beyond that understood yes next separate management all right aditi you have 10 shares of wipro assume can you say wipro whatever it does i will decide aditi what do you think 100% no why because of the feature called separate management whatever is the company's management is separate from whatever the ownership does all right the ownership and management of a company are separate it is not one and the same understood yes next voluntary association for profits we are here for profits let's get this right whenever someone is asking you can a company carry on business not with profit objective the answer is no you can't straight away say section 8 company whenever you are answering please note definitely you guys are going to do this mistake if you don't uh, focus on the point that i'm making right now whenever someone is asking you any question not just now i'm talking from your career perspective as well whenever someone is asking you any question you don't straight away jump into the exceptions you first talk about the general piece of law can i have a company which is not having profit motive the answer is no your company must have profit motive or else why are people even investing in you are you guys understanding yes are there exceptions yes section 8 is the exception i hope i am clear everyone this is a blunder which students do in auditing in corporate law and in your income tax straight away jump into exceptions no that's not how you are going to answer any of the questions i hope i am clear everyone yes the last point common seal one of you said uh, when it was asked you said common seal company must have common seal should all the companies have common seal Mm. common seal is not mandatory for those of you thinking sir what is common seal common seal means if you remember way back olden days you used to go to college to get the seal of the college do you remember yes after getting or school days if you recall after getting your sslc or 10th examination results you go and get the seal on the online copy if at all you recall what is that just the seal that is just to tell that it is a proof that the company that the college has validated yes same way should a company have a common seal the answer is it is not mandatory it is optional if you want you keep if you don't want don't keep i will leave it to you earlier it was mandatory earlier it was mandatory every company must have common seal from amendment act of 2015 what is amendment act every year company has to let's assume whenever there are changes in the act how does the parliament come up with its uh, changes through the amendments all right amendment means parliament is making changes in the act those are the amendment acts so companies amendment act of 2015 said sir if you want you keep your common seal if you don't want don't keep i'll leave it to you it's up to you understood this is your common seal point probably one interesting and one very important point lifting of corporate veil my ca foundation friends must be able to recall the topic seeing the picture itself uh umar or anyone i'll keep it to open the moment i talk about kingfisher fraud do you recall there was a fraud there was some problem in kingfisher do you recall yes no switch on your cameras yes yes sir, sir. the moment i talk about kingfisher fraud whose name comes in your mind first jaymalia 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 why why So he is the behind. The he was behind. When I fraud. talk about Satyam fraud, whose name comes in your mind first? PWC. All right. Let let me not get into that. Let me keep aside. The moment I talk about Satyam fraud, the first name which should ideally come in your mind is Ramalinga Raju. All right. He was the one. For those of you thinking, sir, what are you talking about? There used to be the entire Companies Act 2013 came into picture because of fraud called as Satyam fraud. if time permits 
whenever you are free do read this fraud very very important and very interesting case so when i talk about a fraud why are you associating it with people why are you associating it with people when i say kingfisher fraud i'm talking about the company why are you going behind the company and finding out who's the person behind because you're lifting the corporate veil you are lifting the corporate veil what are you guys doing you are just seeing sir company is okay but who is that person behind the company who is doing this entire mischief who is that person behind this this entire facade of company the entire curtain who is that person who is doing this entire thing what are you doing you are lifting the corporate veil you are just doing something that a court does the moment i spoke about sahara where the moment i spoke about kingfisher the first person you associated the person's name is because this is what courts did courts lifted the veil they are using company as a shell they are using company as a, just a curtain lift the curtain check who is that person who is doing it it's not the company company is being used as an instrument but the fraud was done by a person what is this concept called what is this doctrine called doctrine of lifting the corporate veil understood very very important is there any section is there any law behind it let's quickly see can i start yes yes sir yes sir yes sir see on the screen doctrine of lifting the corporate veil whenever company is used as a shell as a as a personality to just carry out any dishonest or fraudulent activity the courts are going to break open the shell and check who's that person who's using this corporate personality as a shelter it will not be permissible understood so there are sections we will come back to it later on very very interesting question one of you read one of you read can i have a partnership firm with 600 partners 60 partners 30 partners let's assume all of us want to start a partnership what partnership what partnership quick quick divya what business do you want to do silk sari business or you want to get into textile you want to do anything let's assume all of us are starting a partnership firm we have 600 partners can i start now you are thinking sir just an hour back you were talking about companies act all of a sudden what happened to you is it split personality that now you are talking about partnership act there's a reason there's a reason why i'm bringing up this entire topic it's exactly 8:15 we will meet at 8:20 you have 5 minutes take your break think we will connect after 5 minutes it's 8:15 we are going to meet exactly at 8:20 till then think what could be the answer for this question
audible yes sir yes sir all right i insist you to keep your cameras on <clears throat> so go ahead what do you think can i have a, a partnership firm with 600 partners so there will be a limitation yes sir there will be a limitation what is the limitation? no sir yes so we can have yes. uh let's make it easier raise your hands and whatever you have to share your answer please go ahead go ahead divya so we can't have 600 partners because if any fraud occurs i can't be searching each partner uh, uh, around and then 60 partners uh, the maximum is 50 partners that we can have and we can have 30 partners who is giving this limit of 50 so 2000 uh, uh, the partnership firm has given so the partnership act has given according to 2014 the maximum is 50 Is it the Partnership Act? I don't know. It's company, sir. Section six. The company amendment act of. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. One at a time. One at a time. Raise your hand and give your answer. Go ahead. Sec- Section four sixty four of Companies Act uh, says that it does not exceed more than fifty. Companies Act is giving this answer. Who yes, sir. Companies Act to give actions and directions for a partnership firm. Think. I am a partnership firm. Why will I even bother about what is giving in Companies Act? Others, others, attempt, attempt, right, wrong, don't bother. We are all here to learn. Think. Can I have six partners, six hundred partners? Who is stopping me? It's a partnership firm. Partnership Act does not talk about it. For those of you thinking, let me make it easier for you guys. Partnership Act does not give an answer to this. Partnership Act has no such conditions of restriction. think it's there in your caps material i know but that's not the objective of searching just close your caps material and think right wrong let's all learn together so according to 2008 uh, partnership pact the firm can have maximum of unlimited members sir. but was there a partnership act in 2008 google showed it <laughs> go oh, okay google showed it i don't trust google then Okay. Think, 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 think. No, there was no partnership act in 2008. It was LLP act. Some other day, some other topic. We are going to touch upon later on. Not that's not the answer, anyways. Others attempt, friends. I can straight away get into the answer, but that's not the objective. I want you to think. Is it possible? Is it not possible? Who is giving the restriction? The so Companies Act is putting a limit because if there's more members or shareholders, then it should be converted into a company. then it should be con- converted into a company all right no i don't want to convert it into company i'll convert it into llp possible okay fair enough you're saying no partnership i agree i'll start llp is it okay i'll start an llp with 600 partners is it okay yes sir you're saying sir partnership not possible llp possible who's giving an answer answer is coming from companies act wow they have to be registered sir for that they have to be registered i am registered under llp act is it okay llp is okay but partnership not okay sir. i'll register my partnership no I'll sir register my partnership not okay sir. did you get the question friends i'm just trying to get the answer from you guys and you are right let's learn the law now can i start can i start and yes sir yes sir let's yes, start sir. section 464 as one of you rightly mentioned talks about illegal association they are not talking about legit illegit keep aside all that but they talking about they going ahead and calling it as an illegal association itself i hope you understand the language how crude and how strong the language is illegal association they are not calling it as illegal business and invalid no straight away they calling the association itself as illegal what is section 464 say let's learn as per section 464 the number of persons who are forming an association to run a business shall not exceed 50 that means the maximum that you can have is 50 as long as it is unregistered all right if you want to run an association if you want to run a business with a group of people and you don't want to register it i have no problem you continue but you can't have more than 50 people in that in that association or group No sir I want 51 people go ahead have 51 people but please ensure you register that association as a company 
all right so two points that i'm making here sir i want to run a, an association association means group association means group with 50 people with 50 people or let's assume let's keep it simple right now 49 people i will not register it is it okay is it okay answer is yes yes sir i want to run with 51 people is it okay the answer is no you will have to carry on this business only as a company and get yourself registered understood understood everyone yes so i repeat section 464 says in case if you want to run a uh, any business with a group of people it shall be okay it shall be fine it shall be valid until it does not exceed 50 once it exceeds 50 you cannot run any business which is not registered it has to be registered as a company understood everyone understood everyone case 2 have you heard of big fours have you heard of these these term this term called is big four what is a big four as chartered accountants, you should know what is the big four. What is the big, big four? Big four companies, MNCs. So these are four big major chartered accountancy players. KPMG. And Young, PwC, Waterhouse Coopers. that is basically KPMG and Deloitte. Deloitte. Just giving an example. These are the four big players in chartered accountancy. Are there firms other than this? Yes, there are several other CA firms as well. These are the four big players. All right. Now, for your information, they are all LLPs. They are not companies. All right. They are all LLPs. And they have more than 50 partners for your information. How are they doing business? As per section 464, if you want to do business with more than 50 partners, you have to get yourself registered as a company. Something that we just read. Yes or no? Yes or no? But now I am myself giving you an example of an LLP which is having more than 50 partners. To give you a classic example, there is an LLP. One of these big fours have around 120 partners. How are they doing business, sir? Because 464 clearly says you can't do business with more than 50 people until and unless you register yourself as a company. How are these guys doing business then? Sir, an LLP exception. is also a company, sir. LLP is not a company. It's this hybrid. is valid. Uh, this is it is not a company. For your information, sir, it is, LLP okay. is not a company. It is registered so it is an under exception. company. Is it an exception? You're right. Yes. It is an exception. All right. What is the exception? Let's learn the law. Can I start? Section 464 itself is giving you an exception. This shall not apply to the following two categories. What are those two categories? If you are a HUF, which is carrying out business, with whatever number of members, I don't have any problem. Classic examples. For those of you who aren't aware, there are HUFs. So what is a HUF? It is nothing but a Hindu undivided family. All right. It's a group of members of the same family, which is information. There are HUFs even now, which has 250 members, 260 members, existing live examples. All right. I'm giving you practical examples. There are HUFs. According to section 464, HUFs are not registered. They are not registered anywhere as a company. Is it okay? 100% okay. Why? Section 464 itself is saying, Sir, if you are a HUF, I don't have any problem. You carry on with any number of members, I will not come in between. Second point. Second point. If you are an LLP, this act will not apply. This clause, this section 464 is not going to apply to an LLP. Mute yourself. Mute yourself. Mute yourself. Mute yourself. This clause or this point or this provision of law is not going to apply to an LLP. That's why if you see your big force, they have more than 50 partners. Why? Because of this exception. There's a third exception, very interesting exception. If you are a group of professionals, if you are a group of professionals who are carrying on a partnership, it's a partnership and it's a partnership of professionals. I don't have any restrictions, have any, how many ever partners you have. All right. So I'll give you two examples. I'm a partnership firm of chartered accountants, 51 chartered accountants. We are not registered. Is it okay? 51 chartered accountants. Is yes, it okay? Sir. Yes, sir. Because is it, it has okay? an exception. Partnership firm. Yes, sir. It has an exception. I'm not registered. Is it okay? 100% yes, okay. 100% okay. Why? Because the exception itself clearly says, if you are a partnership firm, formed for the purpose of professional activity, then I have no problem. Second example, I am a partnership firm. We are into real estate. We have 51 partners. Is it okay? Real estate. No, we are into, no, into sir. selling no, cement, sir. assume. Is it okay? 
no, answer sir. is no because they are not considered as professionals understood understood so now the question is sir who is going to decide whether you are a professional or not let's assume bcom 51 partners who have done bcom is that professional no sir no sir no sir who is saying no that means your bcom has no value you're just doing it for the sake of it why are you doing bcom then think is the question valid it's or not just a graduation sir bcom answer uh -huh. is professional means any professional degree which is run by its own institute which is run by its own act for the time being example ca has its icai icia act cs icsi act for CWA, there is a separate act. So every uh, every such degree which is having its own association act, there's an institute which is regulating it, that will be covered under this exception. Or else you will not be enjoying this exception. Understood? Understood? Crystal clear with this concept. Section 464, very important for an examination. Multiple attempts they have asked this question. All right. So let's quickly see this law again. As per section 464, the number of persons who are forming an association to run a business shall not exceed 50. If you want more than 50, then please yours, register yourself as a company. Are there exceptions? Yes, there are three exceptions. Right now, you can see only two on your screen. The first one is HUF. You can have any number of members. Second one, in case if it's an association or partnership, which is formed by the professionals. I have no problem. You can have any number of members. The third partners, rather. The third one is your LLPs will not be covered under section 464. Very interesting question. Are minors counted for the purpose of partnership? No, sir. Let's assume, let's assume I have 51 partners. Out of these, there are two minors. I am not using the word minor partners. My friend should know there is nothing called as minor partners. Should I include these two for the purpose of this 50 calculation? What do you think? No, sir. No, sir. I know. Why? No, sir. Because minor is not a partner, sir. Minor is not a partner. No, sir. Can no. minor be a part of the partnership? My friend. Yes, sir. Only for yes. benefits. Sir. They are only just for admitted for the benefit. Only benefits. for profit, sir. Only for profit. Is there a concept called minor partner? Anyone? Right, no, wrong. Sir. My no, friends no, who are from CA Foundation, hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Others, think, 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 think. Is there a concept called as minor partner? Yes, sir. No. Yes? No. Yes. Yes, sir. There is no such concept called as minor partner. Sir, what have I learned then in CA Foundation? I have I have come across this concept of minor partner. You didn't come across the concept of minor partner. You come across the concept called as minors admitted partner. to the benefits of partnership. Is it different? Yes. As per Indian Contract Act, a minor cannot enter into contract. When he can't enter into contract, how can you make him as a partner? Think logically. Think logically. When he cannot enter into contract, how can you override? This entire principle, sir, then what have I learned? What you have learned is not minor partner. You have learned something called as minor admitted to the benefits of partnership. There will never be a language called as minor partner. You will never ever come across. If it is appropriate language, then it will never use the language minor partner. Are you guys understanding? It will always use the language minor admitted to the benefits of partnership. Now, most of you might find chartered accountants doing this blunder, even till date. Chartered accountants, experienced chartered accountants, even till date make this blunder of using the phrase minor partner. Is there such concept? No. There is no such concept called minor partner. It is always minor admitted to the benefits of partnership. He's never a partner. He's just enjoying benefits. It's as good as you're staying with your parents. All right. You're just enjoying the benefits from your family. But because you are pursuing CA, you are never into the family. Yes or no? Do you agree? It's the same concept with the minor partner as well. You are there in the family. You are enjoying the benefits, but you are never a part of the family. Something that you are doing today. Yes? Are you guys understanding the concept that I have given? Yes? So, for the purpose of this 50, will I include minors? Yes? No? Think, think, think. For the purpose of this 50, will I include partners? Minors? No, sir. And no, sir. No, sir. answer is no. Expect this question in examination. Expect this question in examination. There's a high possibility that there will be a question where 51 partners are existing. Out of these 51, there are two minors who are being ad admitted to the benefits of the partnership. Will this two be included for the calculation of section 464? The answer is no. You will not include minors. Clear with the concept, everyone? 
clear with the concept everyone yes no yes, can i get sir. some response yes sir yes sir. yes sir. let's make a note of this question i am expecting this question sometime oh before i go to the notes let's answer sir you will tell 100 things what will happen if i go ahead and do this business something which is running in your mind sir you keep telling it's okay you ask us to do homework we will not do you ask us to read and come we will not do same way you've asked us not to create an illegal uh, association i've created what will happen what do you think is going to happen i've gone ahead i've done this illegal association i have more than 50 members now what think think now what right. they'll have to wind up they'll have to wind up when something was never created itself how will you wind up when law never created something how will you even wind up think there are no legal benefits ah, hold on friends friends raise your hands and then give your answers becomes easier raise your hands and give your answers go ahead chandramali sir no legal benefits sir. no legal benefits what sort of benefits like a being sued or suing others very good point very good point next very interesting point next think think abhishek go ahead personal liability brilliant point personal liability will come into picture personal liability will come into picture so there can be a question in your examination let's assume you 51 of you all 83 of you have started your partnership 83 of you partnership is of selling uh, say it lease now is it acceptable you have carried on now what you have started your business you are doing the business it's an illegal association all of us know so what two points i've got what else think 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 shweta you will have to raise your hand on zoom because i missed out twice go ahead penalty sir they might need to pay penalty, penalty. will come into picture brilliant there's a heavy penalty for those of you who aren't aware we are going to discuss the penalty as well what else that's it that's it go ahead pawan sir i think they cannot claim any set offs uh something like in partnership you've learned set off yes, yes sir. interesting point interesting point yes yes anything else anything else anyone go ahead chandramali go ahead arthi quick sir it cannot come into the contract it cannot enter into contract i would say yes, yes sir let's quickly see the consequences can i start friends i hope you guys are enjoying yes. the first one punishable with a fine which may extend up to 1 lakh rupees all those members all those partners who are enjoying and being a part of this association will be penalized second illegal association is always illegal so there's no question of winding up why why when something was never created itself how can you even winding uh, wind it up when i am saying at inception itself it is illegal at inception itself is it is illegal there cannot be a question of winding up because i never gave you birth so there's no question of death are you guys understanding yes i don't want to get into the philosophy of life now next cannot sue any member or outsider tomorrow let's assume this association has taken 1 crore from you you are a member you are a member of this association you have given 1 crore to the uh, to the association now association says i will not give you money can you file a case against the association answer is no answer is no are you guys understanding yes can the association let's assume the association has given 1 crore to an outsider can the association file a case against the outsider the answer is no again you cannot file any such case against the outsider as well clear with the concept everyone clear with the concept yes it cannot be sued by a member or an outsider as well next i think these are the quick pointers on your first chapter what we'll do is we'll quickly revise this entire topic but i have to highlight a couple of important points so if you see your first chapter in your caps material i mean rather in your study material has quite a lot of definitions all right has almost around 98 definitions we are not going to read all the definitions together now don't raise your eyebrows those 98 does not have everything which is applicable for you what we will do is we'll keep it simple as and when we come across those words we are going to use your first chapter like a dictionary all right that's how we are going to use your first chapter that's how you are going to prepare for examination as well don't spend exclusive time on the first chapter we are going to read those definitions as and when we come across those topics classic example let's assume i'm talking about small company i am not going to talk about small company today 
tomorrow when i'm going to discuss small company concept we are going to refer to the definition this is how we are going to finish our first chapter at the same time we are going to use the first chapter as a dictionary understood yes now let's quickly spend 10 minutes in revising whatever we have discussed till now does not mean that i'm done with my session i still have another hour i know how to go about and engage you guys all right right now 100% focus let's quickly spend 10 minutes can i uh, can we start yes sir yes sir yes sir 100% focus so we started understanding what is your entire syllabus we went on to understand the history of your company sac all right we've understood the structure of how a law is framed probably those three or four points which i have discussed one is called as rules what are rules how to implement law act there are two important things please remember every law has two important things one is called as the act the other one is called as rules all right there is something called as companies act 2013 and there are several rules which are passed by the law now what is act act is talking about what is the law what are rules rules talk about how to implement this law how to implement this law how to bring it into action that is covered in rules understood everyone yes then you have case laws what are case laws these are several court decisions which are going to be the basis of our understanding all right here and there we will be using classic example if you recall solomon versus solomon we have used it time and again to understand the principle of company and characteristics of company yes next there's something called as notifications and circulars what are notifications and circulars law might come or your your government can come up with its own variety of implementations it can say how to implement or how to do meetings in covid time now you and i don't know how to do a meeting in a covid time yes or no so rules are going to talk about how to implement rule act and notifications or circulars are nothing but the decisions or any particular uh, you know timing which uh, any particular fact which the government is going to come up with are you guys understanding yes and the last one is amendments what are amendments amendments are changes in the law whenever i want to change the law how will i do it i will not do it through circulars and notifications i will do it by passing an amendment in the parliament amendment means in the parliament we are going to discuss it and then make changes that is called as amendment understood then we went on to understand what is a company we saw section 1 which is with respect to the applicability of company then we went on to understand characteristics of company we have spent exactly one and a half hour on your basics all right then we went on to understand uh, limited liability are there an exception to limited liability there are five scenarios then we went on to understand lifting of corporate will we saw what is the concept of lifting of corporate will we saw illegal association under section 464 what are the consequences of illegal association if there is anything all right now is the screen visible yes sir yes quickly tell me is there a difference between member and shareholder very very important very very important time and again lot of you will get confused so i am going to spend 10 minutes on this concept 100% focus sleepy sleepy no sir yes no sir aditi no sir ramya shreyas chandan quick 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 respond all right yes, sir. no sir is there a difference between the word member and shareholder raise your hands and give your answers right wrong don't bother make mistake friends make mistakes probably this is the only place where you can do pooja go ahead Uh, member can't pay shareholder super yeah all right go ahead i'm sorry sir member can't pay shareholder members can't be shareholders can shareholders be members yes now i'm confused members can't be shareholders but shareholders can be members what is the difference then who is a member who is a shareholder member is a person one at a time hold on hold on hold on member is a member is a person who hold the shares of the company all right sir sorry sir shareholder is a person who hold the shares of the company member is a person who register in the member member of the company brilliant point i will come back to you very good point arti tejaswini pavan rahul priyadarshini chandramouli same answer same sir sequence. those of you who have same answers please put down your hands if you have something else to share keep your hands raised quick 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 um, who subscribes for the memorandum of association is a member is a member okay okay who owns the shares is a shareholder uh a person who is subscribing as well as having shares a member cannot be a shareholder right sir i i don't know i'm asking a member cannot be a shareholder then no sir they can be what is a member be. of whose membership is he holding then if he can't be a shareholder whose membership is he holding 
good next 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 pawan quick sir i think members include uh, board of directors and shareholders and uh, members yes, include sir. board of directors interesting point right wrong we are going to discuss rahul quick the people in a company which doesn't have a share capital are called members and with share capital they are called shareholders let's assume, okay so in my company i have share capital so whoever is holding shares will be called as shareholders they will yes, not be called members and the shareholders are also members like all the shareholders are members but all the members aren't shareholders all the members are shareholders but all shareholders are not members this is quite okay. confusing it's vice right. versa all right fair enough right wrong we are going to discuss priya darshan quick Uh, you've raised your hand. I think you have already discussed your point. Uh, Shweta, quick. Yes. The shareholders are the owners of the company, and member may not be the owners of the company. Then what are the member? What membership are they holding? Is it some country club membership? What membership is it? You're right. You're right. I'm just trying to get answers from you. Divya, go ahead. So shareholder are not a member of a company. Like member includes even a shareholders and a board of directors. members include board of directors why who are board of directors how how are they members tejaswini quick go ahead uh, so members are one who subscribe to the memorandum of association who will also have minimum uh, share subscription share subscription and shareholders only have shares shareholders members have only shares they don't they are not the first shareholders uh, no All right. So there is slight confusion between subscribers. I will come back to you guys on that as well. Now, Deep, go ahead. Uh, promoters are the members. Okay. And shareholders, uh, uh, I mean, they uh, they can be members. I mean, shareholders can be members, but members cannot be shareholders. Shareholders can be members. Members cannot be shareholders. <sighs> Complete bail puri. Let's learn. Let's learn. Anusha, go ahead. One last answer. Quick. Okay, member is a person whose uh, his name is uh, entered in the registration of the company, but the shareholder's name is not registered under the. Brilliant, company. brilliant. Finally, I get the answer. Now, those of you who haven't understood what Anusha meant, let me quickly summarize it for you. You cleared CA final. Congratulations, you cleared CA final. Are you a chartered accountant? Sir, first of all, clearing no, itself sir. is a task I have cleared. Apart that, you still don't give me. Ha! Someone, someone just answered. membership CFC number membership. we should get membership number license sir now what is this membership number which license it i already provides ICA, ICA ICA provides we should register as a member in the ICA you have to register yourself in the ICA that means you are not a chartered accountant after clearing CA final examination also we are still did a student sir at that time you are still a student did you get the point that i'm trying to drive here you have cleared your CA final but still you are not a chartered accountant why chartered accountant means a person whose name is reflecting in the register of members of chartered accountant institution icai basically that means that means for you to become a chartered accountant your name has to be registered your name has to reflect in the register of icai same way same way you might have the shares of infosys but still you are not a you are still not a member of infosys why Until and unless your name is registered in the register of members of ICI uh, of Infosys, understood, sir? Then I have shares. Who am I? My name is not reflecting in the register, but I have shares of Infosys. Who, who am I then? You are just a shareholder. It's as good as you cleared your CA final exams, but until and unless your name is reflecting in the register of members of ICI, you are not a member of institute. similarly you might be a shareholder but until and unless your name is reflecting in the register of shareholders register of members you're not a member you're just a shareholder now what is the difference sir i have the shares no as long as i have the shares i'll enjoy no only members enjoy the benefits of a company not a shareholder did you guys understand yes only member you can sign a financial statement only if you are a ca just because you have cleared ca final examination does not mean that you can sign audit reports it's a separate thing that my article friends become and run around like a chartered accountant even before clearing their ca final examination that's a separate topic let me keep that aside but having said that you can sign a financial statement only if you are a chartered accountant yes or no 
you are yes. a chartered accountant only when your name is reflecting in the register of members so there is a difference between see a between a shareholder and member what is a shareholder shareholder is a person who is holding his shares but when his name is recorded in the register of members then he can call himself as a member understood so now onwards if you carefully see every section of the act it does not use the language shareholder it always uses the language member because rights are available to the members and not the shareholders are you guys understanding it's you clear ca final examination you're just a shareholder when your name reflects in the register you become a member you become a chartered accountant understood understood the difference everyone crystal clear now onwards even by mistake if you use the word shareholder until and unless the section mentions your answer is wrong if you ask me if i am the evaluator and if i find this word shareholder instead of members i will scratch the answer if i am the evaluator you're lucky that i am not all right so what am i trying to say please ensure now onwards whenever we are using the language we use the language members and not shareholders is everyone crystal clear with the concept everyone crystal clear these small things makes a lot of difference between 39 and 40 and 59 and 60 and the rank holder and just to one mark who is missed just a person who has missed the rank by one mark this is the reason for difference this is the reason for difference and i don't want anyone missing out on your ranks because of these blunders understood go ahead divya quick 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 so there is a shareholder so if we get registered as a member what is a privilege so why, like if i will get registered as a member what do i do you are a member you enjoy all the benefits you have the dividend you have the voting rights you have all the benefits that a member should enjoy it's as good so, as when once you're a chartered accountant you can sign but even before you become a chartered accountant can you sign the answer is no that so is the difference so if i'm a shareholder i don't get anything you just hold the shares but you don't enjoy the benefits that's why we always insist on getting yourself in the register that's why you are always required to become a member not just a shareholder all right or else it's as good as you are holding a coupon of amazon you're holding a coupon of say uh, any of the sudexos is it useful the answer is no you're just holding it you're just holding it you will get the benefit only when you are a part of this entire organize all right next go ahead arthi so can you explain once more sir i repeat um, yeah. brilliant guys i would be the happiest person in case if you have not understood your the point and raise the question i repeat there's a lot of difference between shareholder and members you clear your ca final examination are you a chartered accountant the answer is no you are still not a chartered accountant you're just a student like one of you mentioned you're just a ca finalist when will you become a chartered accountant only when your name is recorded in the register of ICI understood similarly when it come to a shareholder just having the share certificate is not sufficient your name should be recorded in the register of members for you to be called as a member of that organization as a member of that company all right so shareholder need not be member always but all members are shareholders understood all shareholders are not members all ca final examination pass outs are not chartered accountants but all chartered accountants should have cleared their ca final examination as simple as that understood yes Clear sir yes thank Abhishek. you go ahead quick uh, Abhishek, sir quick. Uh, yeah my question is about illegal association of 464 i'll i'll take that question hold on let's okay. let's quickly first take the concept of uh, this one uh, sri lakshmi go ahead so then why shareholder is considered the owner of the company ideally shareholders are never the owners of the company it is the members who are the owners of the company that's why if you see in every section in every section that i've shown on the screen they've used the language members and not the shareholders time and again you will realize this time and again you will realize this as well ideally shareholders are not the members our shareholders are not the owners ideally it is the members who are the owners of the company but colloquially just for the sake of convenience people have made it easier by using the word shareholders ideally only a shareholder who is re registered in the uh, register of member is the one who is the owner of the company all right chandramali quick sir a shareholder who is not a member will he be eligible for dividends sir he will be eligible but only after his name is recorded in the register that means okay. as good as becoming a member 
yes sir thank you yes anusha go ahead sir dividend is getting the share order also sir dividend is ideally given only to members when i'm discussing when i'm discussing this entire concept of dividend you will realize that they never use the language shareholder they always use the word members because only a member is eligible to get the benefit of dividend however there are a few exceptions maybe we are going to discuss later on section 126 comes into picture we are going to discuss it later on all right next okay sir okay sir thank you anything else that's it go ahead abhishek your question on illegal association oh yes sir so you mentioned that maximum 50 members restrictions where i have read that the central government can raise up to 100 members is it true interesting question all right now to answer this question the language is central government if they want to change this 50 to 100 can they do so the answer is yes who is giving this power it's coming from the section as on date how many how, what is the limit the limit is still 50 tomorrow if central government wants to change it from 50 to 70 can it do so yes it wants to change from 50 to 80 can it do so yes it wants to change from 50 to 120 can it do so the answer is no the answer is no why because in the section they have clearly mentioned in the section they have clearly mentioned that if government wants to change from 50 up to 100 they can beyond 100 if they want to can they the answer is no The answer is no. I hope I'm clear. Abhishek. Okay, sir. Yeah, thank you. All right. Anything else? Arthi, go ahead. Quick. <clears throat> sir, uh, when a person becomes insolvent, what about his unlimited liability if he has not cleared? If you see, whenever there is insolvency, another official receiver or official assignee comes into picture. Now, insolvent person cannot enter into contracts. Yes. So, whatever he has, let's assume the little bit of amount which is left. What about that? What will happen to that? that will be used but that will be at the discretion of the court court is going to decide who is going to get how much and what it is it is not you and i now court has better things to do so what is going to what the court is going to do it is going to assign one person all right that, that person will look into the affairs of this entire insolvent person understood yes that person is called as the official assignee next court divya So we studied that the limit is fifty. But why in the Companies Act we are studying all this? The Partnership LLP. Because Partnership Act is not talking about it. Framed in nineteen thirty-two, no changes. LLP Act came recently in two thousand eight. All right. So there had to be a stop gap. Someone had to come into picture and tell that no, I can't let you do this business with as an illegal association. So who took up the responsibility? It was Companies Act. All right. That's why Companies Act has made it very clear. If you want to do business with more than fifty people, register yourself as a company. I don't want you to even register anywhere else. Register yourself as a company and do business. As simple as that. Understood? Crystal clear with the concept. Go ahead, Chandra Mali. Probably the last question which I'll Sir, be taking uh, up on this. Whenever we buy shares through either apps like uh, Zero Da or something else, uh, will our name automatically be entered in uh, companies register or how, sir? No. quite interesting topic if you ask me we have a chapter called a share capital which we are going to okay. discuss later on okay. nevertheless since you have asked to give a very quick answer to your question his question is sir i have purchased shares on zero da now is my name reflecting in the register of company the answer is no how it works is companies have given the entire shares to two people who are they cdsl and sdl these are the depositories all right whenever you purchase shares you are not purchasing it from the company you are purchasing it from the depository your names will be reflecting in the register of depository section says that whenever your name is reflecting in the register of depositories it's as good as it is register of the members or of the company understood understood yes, sir. Yes, for those of you who you. haven't understood when we are discussing share capital separate chapter we are going to discuss it later on right now chandramouli did you understand yes sir thank you sir let's keep it aside all right so can we continue friends yes yes sir let's yes, brush sir. upon a couple of important definitions right now and then we start with chapter 2 is the screen visible is the screen visible no yes, sir no yes, sir all right just give me a second boring sleepy yes sir no sir Can we start? Yes, sir. All right. So, chapter two. We start with chapter two, which is incorporation of 
incorporation and formation of company all right so before i get on to the details let's quickly see the importance of this topic if you see your first part is going to be of 60 marks all right your first part is going to be of 60 marks yes or no like i've already mentioned companies act now ici has made your life easier how they have already given the importance of each and every topic all right they have already told which topic has how much weightage in examination so the same thing they have done with the first bucket the first bucket has four chapters which is going to fetch 25 to 40 percent in your examination that is roughly 15 to 24 marks is going to be from these four chapters cakewalk very very simple and easy topics at the same time you will have to spend some time on this preliminary is something that we have already discussed the first chapter is over for those of you who didn't realize the first chapter is over those which are pertaining to the definitions like i've already mentioned in the preliminary chapter you have definitions we will run upon those topics as in when we come across those subtopics second chapter is incorporation of companies and matters incidental to this is the second chapter which we are going to start important bucket four chapters in this bucket preliminary incorporation prospectus and share capital we are done with the first chapter now we are talking about second chapter first chapter nothing i found out whatever it was relevant we have discussed let's get started with the first topic section one you have to remember was talking about short title extent and commence commencement and extent all right that is extent. the name of the section all right that was section one where we have seen the applicability of the act section two is talking about definitions like i've already told you as and when we come across the topic we are going to discuss what is section two now we are talking about section three which deals with formation of company i'll read section three then i have a few questions you will have to answer 100 percent focus 100 percent focus understood yes can i start yes sir can i get some response Yes, yes, sir. Sir. Yes, sir. Boring? Sleepy? No, no sir. sir. No, sir. No, sir. Yes, no. Or else even I will teach in the same fashion that I get the energy. Can I start? New yes, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Section 3 deals with formation of company. I'll read the law first and then we are going to interpret the law. A company may be formed this may itself is creating a lot of issues. A company may be formed for any lawful purpose by seven or more persons in a public company, two or more persons in a private company, one person in case of one person company by subscribing their names or his name to the memorandum and complying the requirements of this act in respect of registration. I've read the law. Don't worry. I have a few questions. Tejas when he says, I want to run a company, but for unlawful purpose. Is it okay? No, sir. No, sir. Don't no. answer. Just no. take off it. Read the law and answer. I want to carry on unlawful purpose. I want to start a company, but that company is only for unlawful purpose. I want to smuggle goods. Assume. Can I do so? Yes, sir. Till the time police catch up. <laughs> ah, interesting, sir. Until someone catches, you do. It's as good as I don't. I want to ride two wheeler. Can I ride? Yes. I don't have DL. As long as the cops catch you, you ride two wheeler without license. It's okay. <laughs> Same way. I want to do a business, unlawful business. Can I do so? No, sir. Because the definition says for any lawful purpose. But if you read the first line clearly, there is another point also coming from there. Mute yourself. Mute yourself. I want to do business, but for unlawful purpose. Can I do so? If it was so obvious, I wouldn't have asked this question at intermediate stage. Think logically and answer. There's a reason why I'm spending time. Can I do business for unlawful purpose? Think, think, think. No answers at all. I thought Sarah. it was very obvious. Good. According to Indian Contract Act of 1872, unlawful, uh, there is no contract for unlawful or illegal things. Arthi, do me a favor. Read the first line again, loudly. A company may be formed Hold. for any... 
Hold. Maybe. Law itself says maybe. If you want, you do it for lawful purpose. If you do, if you don't want, do it for unlawful purpose. Ideally, what is the meaning of the word may? What is the meaning of the word? You may Can attend happen. my classes. Let me keep it simple. You may attend my classes. That means I am giving you an option. If you want, you attend. If you don't want, don't attend. As simple as that. Yes or no? Sir, the word may uh, insist for formation, sir, not for lawfulness. Not for lawful purpose? I Why mean, so? may insist for formation or not forming, sir. It it's not Brilliant considering. Brilliant point. Brilliant point. Anything else? Think, think. Very good point, Reyes. Others, think. Did you understand the question? Shweta, Darshan, understood the question? I repeat, the question is very simple. I want to carry on business. But for unlawful purpose. I don't want to do it for a lawful purpose. Do you think the law, it, law is permitting you to do so? Ideally, if you read the section, the first line is using the word may. That means you may do it for lawful purpose or you may do it for unlawful purpose. We might not have thought about it. You might not even believe to the fact that these were the questions which were raised in the courts. These were the questions which were raised in the courts. This is why law is so interesting. This is why law is so interesting. Because just this word may, by mistake, we keep texting may, shall, will, would, anything and everything under the sky, however we want. But look at the language. Just because of this word may, I can carry on unlawful purpose business as well. But interpretation is going to change. Can we learn the law now? Interesting question. Yes. yes. Sir. Can we learn the law now? Of course. Yes, sir. You can't do it for unlawful purpose. All of us know the answer. All of us know the answer. No, you can't do it for unlawful purpose because that is something that you are not agreeing to. But if you read the law, ideally, they've used the word may. That means it is optional. Can I read this word may as may or should I read this word may as shall? Did you get the point? Did you get the point? Should I read the word may as a may or should I read the word may as shall? What do you as think? Shall. There's no option. You have to read the word may as shall. Although they've used the word may, but you have to read this word may as shall. And this is what is called as interpretation of statutes of five marks or six marks in your other laws. If you realize there's a chapter called as interpretation of statutes. Do you recall? Yes, what is that topic revolving? That's revolving around how these to, topics. How to read law. If you remember, how to read law. Ideally, there was a confusion. There was a confusion in the initial stage because of the usage of the word may. There was a confusion in the industry. Mind you guys. Then later on, it was interpreted that you can't read word may as may. It has to be interpreted as shall. Like rightly mentioned by one of our friends, this may is not for lawful purpose. It has to be for lawful purpose only. The may is for the formation. You may form a company or you may not form a company. But if you form a company, it has to be for lawful purpose only. Did you guys understand? Interesting? Interesting? Yes? Yes, sir. Now, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Second point. You may form a company. But what type of company? I want to start a private company. I want to start a public company. I want to start a one-person company. What type of company can I start? You may start a, a public company provided you have seven or more. Is it using the word member, shareholders? What is the language is it using? What language is it using? Quick, 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 quick. Members. Seven or more persons who are going to subscribe their names to the memorandum indirectly. It is using the word members. Indirectly, it is using the word members. Why? Because if your names are registered in the memorandum, it is as good as your name is coming in the register. Therefore, I will read the word persons as members. Understood everyone? Yes. Appreciating the language. Seven or more members are required for a public company. Two or more members are required for a private company. And one person. Why have they, why have they not used the word minimum one, one or more persons? Why? Only one person. Only one person. Only one person. Copy paste error is something that you are thinking? No. In case of one person company, there can only be one person. You can't have a concept of one or more person. 
are you guys appreciating sir we are talking about one person company most of us while writing answers we would have blindly written seven or more persons public company two or more person private company one or more person one person company wow did you guys understand the point in public company you can have seven or more persons i need 50 people can i have yes in a private company i need 20 people can i have yes in one person company i need 20 people can i have not no. possible only yes. one person can be a member in case of one person company understood everyone crystal clear with the concept yes so what is section 3 saying sir i leave it to you you want to start a public company you want to start a private company you want to start a opc i leave it to you you decide it has to be for a lawful purpose now how do you start you can form a company by having at least seven people if it's a public company at least seven people must get their names registered in the sub in the memorandum all right so what is this subscribing who are subscribers you guys have been using this word subscribers quite often who are these subscribers the members. first shareholders the first members of the company the first members of the company are called as subscribers now what are they subscribing to they are subscribing to the memorandum that's why their names are reflecting in the memorandum understood yes so subscribers means the first members of the company the first time whoever is becoming the member of the company they are called as subscribers and their names are reflecting in the memorandum understood everyone yes so section 3 says if you want to become a public company get seven or more people subscribing to the memorandum and they will be the members the first members of the company if you want to start a private company get two people if you want to start a one person company get at least one person can i use the word at least no 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 sir only one person only one and only one. use the word at least do not blindly abuse the language you have to use the word only one person is going to be the subscriber in case of a one person company crystal clear with the concept everyone yes, yes. now i have highlighted a few words in green why what is a public company anyone what is a public company where is the definition what is what is a public company which is not private it is not a private company which is brilliant. not a private company brilliant what is a public company something which is not a private company you are right you are right section 2 clause 70 which section which section section 2 clause quick quick 71 71 section 2 clause 71 specifically discusses the definition of the word public company now we go back to the dictionary the first chapter like i've already mentioned the first chapter we will be using as dictionary all right so we will be finishing the first chapter in this fashion we go to the definition of public company it says section 2 clause 71 defines the word public company it says public company means a company which is not a private company that's it no it has a proviso what is the proviso says proviso is talking about deem public company concept we are going to discuss this in detail when i'm taking you through the definition of public company hold on now since let's first touch upon private company why because you said public company means not a private company so we have to understand what is a private company what is a private company anyone what is a private sir which is not listed in uh, stock exchange Which ah, is, okay. Which is not listed in are... stock exchange is private company. Uh, can a public company not be listed on stock exchange? Yes, sir. Hundred percent. Yes, yes. Sir. yes. That means according to your answer, that public company is not public company. It has become private. Complete. Bail It point. may or may not. My question is, sir, simple. define private company. Very simple question. Give me simple answer. Where the members It's are restricted, not more than two hundred. and uh, the share transferability of shares uh, is not possible arthi hold on i want to note that point since you have brought in couple of very interesting points restriction what is the restriction on members members all right right or wrong i don't know i'm just making a note of it all right 200 members next prohibition prohibition what is the prohibition for Uh, transferability of shares transferability of shares prohibition on transferability of shares wow interesting oh, next next the prohibition to invite public sir, invite public sir prohibition. i don't know whatever you guys are saying i'm just writing prohibition on transferability or prohibition on inviting public whatever you said i'm just making a note of it next 
someone was me you know hinting at three points what is the third point restricting the right to share the transfer of shares sir restriction is on transfer limiting the right to transfer shares all right limited wow number sir limiting numbers uh, number of members restricting transferability of shares prohibition on inviting the public limiting members prohibition on inviting public and restriction is on transferability transferability sir, sir. one and the same no how is it different that's what even others told restriction number prohibition transferability limit right to transfer one and the same no why am i creating so much fuss why am i creating so much fuss let's learn the law let's learn the law wow interesting to see that my students are still thinking what exactly is the definition of a private company is the screen visible is the yes, screen visible sir. yes let's learn the law just give me a second i'll open the law quite interesting to see that we are not sure what exactly is private company's definition can you see the screen yes sir yes. all right just give me a second i'm opening opening the act itself so that it becomes convenient for each one of you this is how we are going to learn law guys this is how we are going to learn law can you see the definition public company public company means a company which is not private company someone just said we are going to discuss this anyways i haven't started yet don't worry let's first learn the definition of private company section 2 clause 68 100% each one of you should know the definition of it all right each one of you have to remember the definition and the section title there's no compromise on the section titles all right section 2 clause 68 defines the word the phrase private company most of you said restriction limitation prohibition one and the same the order might be upar niche that's okay right not okay not okay how when where what why we are going to discuss now let's get started private company means a company which having a minimum paid up share capital this concept does not exist anymore there is no minimum paid up capital requirement all right which by its articles <clears throat> restricts the right to transfer its shares someone said restriction is on restriction is on number of members right someone just said number of members i don't know whatever you guys said i was just making a note of it all right here it is restriction on right to transfer its shares one and the same no how is it different let's see second limits the number of its members to 200 i know i haven't read something wait there's a reason all right limits the number of members to 200 someone said limitation is on right to transfer one and the same no we'll figure out next after the limitation the third point is shall not prohibit or rather prohibits any invitation to public to subscribe to any of its securities someone said prohibition is on transferability of shares is it one and the same prince first yes. let's understand let's understand what each of these words are restriction limitation prohibition please note section 2 clause 68 is defining private company it says private company means a company by which by its articles of association has following three points what are the three points there is a restriction there is some limitation and there is some prohibition what is the difference between restriction and prohibition anyone sir right on, hold on hold on hold on hold on hold on my friends who aren't from ca foundation background i want you guys to attempt right wrong don't bother let's all make mistakes now what is the difference between the word restriction and prohibition one and the same no one and the same i thought restriction they are saying you are restricting it from transferring shares prohibiting you are telling that you prohibit from inviting public subscriptions what is the difference between restriction and prohibition word chandra molly sir prohibition means completely not doable sir. restriction is uh, with some instances or with some exceptions or with some extension like that sir. let me give It's... you an example you're right you're right for those of you who are thinking sir what is the difference between restriction and prohibition 100% focus covid during covid there was a restriction on your movement in the city 
Yes. During COVID, there was a prohibition from entering temples, masjids, churches. What is this? One and the same, no? If you see, restriction means you cannot do this except for a few exceptions. All right. During COVID, there was a restriction on movement. That means you can move, but there are a few terms and conditions that you will have to adhere to. Classic example, you can go out for getting your daily necessities. You can go out provided it is not having 50 members or more. You can go out provided you are wearing your mask. That was the restriction. During COVID, there was a prohibition also. What was the prohibition? You cannot enter, temples cannot be opened, your masjids, churches cannot be opened. What was that? Completely closed. You cannot do that at all. Are you guys understanding? So if you see, the definition is having a restriction and it is having a prohibition. Restriction from what? From transferability of shares. That means you can transfer but there are a few terms and conditions that you have to remember in case of a private company. What is the prohibition? You cannot invite public to come and subscribe to your shares. If I invite a public, how is it a private company? Think logically. How is it even a private company? We are talking about a definition of private company. If I can allow a public to come and subscribe, how is it even a private company? It's a public company. Yes or no? So please note two very interesting points. Restriction on transfer of shares. Prohibition from inviting public to subscribe to your shares. Understood? Yes. What is this limitation then? Three things. Restriction, limitation and prohibition if you recall. What is this limitation? Limitation is on the number of members. You cannot have more than 200 members. Understood everyone? Understood everyone? Yes. So in this 200 calculation, I have a few confusions. Confusion is, Shweta, let's assume you and I are holding shares. Let's assume we are holding shares of MRF. One share of MRF is of around 80, 85,000. One share. All right. Shweta and I know both of us will not be able to buy this one share individually. So what we do? 40,000 I will give. Shweta will give 40,000. We will buy one share. What are we called? We are called joint shareholders. All right. We are called as the joint members. Understanding everyone? Yes. Now, for the purpose of this 200 calculation, will Shweta and I be counted as two or will we be counted as one? One. 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 That means yes, sir. either of us will be reflecting in the register of members or both of us will be reflecting? Both of you. Both, both of them. Then how is it one? If both of us are reflecting, then how is it one? Both of them jointly. Joined. Both of us together Joined. reflecting as one, sir. Uh, both of us together reflecting as one. I didn't understand this language. Anyways, let's keep it aside. Anything else? Shares are counted, not the Only persons. for the counting purpose. Both of us will be recorded in the register of members. However, for the purpose of calculation of this 200, we will be considered as one. Understood? Understood? Yes. yes sir. Clear with the concept? Now, what am I talking about? I am still in the definition of private company only. We saw there is a restriction. There is a limitation. There is a prohibition. In the limitation, I have clearly told you, you can't have more than 200 members. Now, for the purpose of calculating this 200 members, what all you have to ignore is what we are discussing right now. Understood? First thing, joint shareholders or joint members will be considered as one member only. They will not be considered as two or more for the purpose of calculation of 200. But in the register of members, both our names will be reflected 100%. Or else imagine, Shweta's name is reflecting. Do you think I will agree? I will be fine with it? No. Do you think no. is it possible? Not possible. Not possible. My name is reflecting. Do you think Shweta will agree? She will be the first one to keep the knife on the comp company's uh, throat and ensure that her name is reflecting. Yes or no? Logical. Logical. Second question. Raghavendra. You've given the sweat to our company. All right. You've given your sweat to the company. Let's assume you were the first one to come up with COVID vaccination. Assume. All right. You were the first one to come up with the COVID vaccination. Don't you think you have done so much for our company? We have to appreciate you. How we can appreciate you? Give you money, give you shares. We can give you money or we can give you shares in the company. Why don't you become a company owner itself? Not completely to the extent possible. For the purpose of this 200, let's assume we have thousands of such Raghavendras in our company. Will I be including them? No. No. Interesting question. 
yes or no ideally yes. they are having the shares of my company ideally they are members of my company but for the purpose of this 200 will i be including them no law says no don't include your employees whether present employees or ex employees whoever they are don't include them for the purpose of this 200 calculation if they have become members because of their employment they have become members because they were my employees yes or no they have given the sweat to our company they were our employees i have given them membership because they were our employees they have given so much to the company why don't we appreciate them now law says what you are doing is for the betterment of your employees you are doing it for the society at large i will give you the permission don't include them for the purpose of 200 don't you think it is favorable yes or no don't you think it is going to push the company to make more and more employees as their owners because it will have their skin in the company they will be more engaged in the company yes or no so law recognizes this law says enjoy don't include them in the 200 calculation understood did you ever think section 2 clause 68 could be so much to discuss the answer is no but this is what is section 2 clause 68 understood everyone so section 2 clause 68 we revise again section 2 clause 68 says private company is a company which by its articles has three important factors there's a restriction there's a limitation and there's a prohibition what is the restriction restriction is on transferability of shares that means you can do but with few conditions what is the limitation limitation is on the number of members you can have more than 200 members can i have more than 200 members focus no, focus sir. focus limitation is on the number of members you can't have more than 200 members but for the purpose of this 200 members don't include joint members don't include your members of past or present employees if they've become shareholders because of our members because of their employment all right joint holders will be considered as one instead of considering them as two as simple as that what is the prohibition you can't go to the public and ask them to subscribe to your securities as simple as that that is the prohibition crystal clear with the concept crystal clear with the concept what yes, are the sections sir. have we discussed yes, today sir. we've discussed section one section, we've discussed two. section 464 we started with section two which is discussing about what exactly is the definition or rather section 2 clause 68 we've discussed what exactly is the definition of a private company we have seen section 2 clause 20 which is the definition of company i want each one of you to have these section titles at the tip of your tongue by next class understanding yes now am i done with my session not yet hold on section 2 clause 68 is something that we've understood private company definition all of us have understood yes or no now let's understand one person i haven't got into public company yet i'm still in one person company what is one person company section 2 clause 62 defines one person company one person company means a company which has only one person as a member can i use the language minimum one person no, no sir only no, one sir. person no, only one person, person. trust yes, me sir. Sure. next class i will still ask this question and most of you will do the blunder i am telling you i know my students all right next class same person asking the same question i will end up using the word minimum and most of you will nod your head no 100 percent focus the language minimum is not applicable in case of one person company the language is only one person trust me had it been ca foundation i wouldn't have emphasized so much but at intermediate stage you can't afford making these mistakes understood so section 2 clause 62 one person company means a company which has only one person as a member is one person company private company or public company what kind of company is it private company private company, private company. Private company. how do you say so why why should i even talk about private company or public company it's a separate category altogether right why should i even talk why should i classify them under private company or public company the reason being please note there are a few sections which are just calling public company or private company all right they are talking only about public company private company they are not talking about opc now the confusion is is that law applicable to opc then let's assume let me give you an example private companies need not appoint a company secretary example example all right private companies need not appoint a company secretary subject to a few conditions now they have just used the word private company 
is this law applicable to one person company yes sir if opc is silent yes, then it is applicable please note law says whatever rules and regulation whatever provision of law is applicable to a private company the same thing is going to apply to a one person company as well now you might be thinking sir where is it coming from who is saying this the definition of private company itself where in private company definition we have just gone through the definition let me show it to you can you see the screen can you see yes, the screen sir. Yes, the sir. definition of private company if you see very very interesting definition i'm going to the definition here private company means a company which by its article restricts the right of transfer limits the number of members to 200 but before that hold on except in case of one person company now what is the meaning of this anyone sir you carve out something you are creating an exception only if that thing was included you can say that girls need not come to the session only if girls were included in that session yes or no yes or no i can remove something out of a box only if that thing was in the box yes or no same yes, way had i not put this condition then that would have created confusion now they have removed one person company from private companies limitation yes or no that means yes. that means one person companies are also private companies or whatever rules and regulations apply to a one, private company the same thing applies even to a one person company understood everyone crystal clear with the concept i repeat yes. for my friends guys i am purely driven by logic something just for the sake of it we are not going to learn i am telling you if something is applicable whatever is private company is applicable to opc there is a reason behind it what is the reason the reason is the definition of private company if you see quite interesting very interesting if you ask me if you can appreciate private company has one phrase except so there is a limitation on the number of members what is the limitation you can't have more than 200 members yes now if you see even before this limitation there is one very interesting phrase what is the phrase except in case of one person company now why are they creating an exception because it was there in the definition you can remove something from a box only if that thing was there in the box or else how will, what will you remove how can you remove something which was never there are you guys understanding therefore when i say whatever law is applicable to a private company shall apply to an opc also it's coming from section 2 clause 68 understood everyone able to appreciate the language yes or no now very important thing whatever law is applicable to a private company applies to a one person company until and unless if the section itself says don't apply it to opc to give you an example have you seen cash flow statements have you heard that there is something called as cash flow statement yes or no see a bond yes, was wrong it was there in your yes, syllabus sir. or bcom you might have come across cash flow statements what are cash flow statements nothing but some complicated way of arriving how much is your closing balance not really interesting but at the same time it's a part of your financial statements now what is the problem sir preparing pnl account itself is a task upon that we have to balance the balance sheet itself which never balances and i end up creating suspense account something that you guys might be doing now upon that you want me to make another statement called as cash flow statement law says i understand your balance sheet itself never totals you forget about cash flow statement when it comes to opc understood so cash flow statements are applicable to private companies is it applicable to opc the answer is no why because the law itself says in the definition of financial statement cash flow statements need not be made by opcs understood so why am i giving this example the example is being given to tell that whatever law is applicable to a private company the same thing applies to an opc as well it applies to opc as well however if the section itself says don't apply it to opc don't apply as simple as that understood understood everyone if you guys realize i've just defined section 2 clause 68 and section 2 clause 62 we are yet to see what is op uh, what is a public company can we start is the screen visible is yes, the screen sir. visible before i get on to what is a uh, what is a public company let's quickly also see a couple of other points we've seen is opc a public company or private company all of us know it is a private company whatever law applies to a private company the same thing applies to an opc as well until and unless law prescribes then we go on to understand in the memorandum of association all the opcs must be subscribed by one person we have already seen where is it coming from which section which section 
quick 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 section 2 section 2 section 2 class 62 section 3 section 3 section 3 section 3 just now we have discussed Did formation of company this is law we know but where is it coming from we don't know you will remember it only with revision all right with revision we will be able to recall don't worry about it all right so it clearly says section 3 says your memorandum has to be subscribed by one person and that person has to be member tomorrow anything happens to this member who is going to look after the company tomorrow anything happens to this one member since it's a one person company who is going to look after the company very interesting question so law says nominee. in the memorandum itself you mention who is going to be the nominee in the event of death of that one person tomorrow anything happens to that one person someone has to take care of the company yes or no who is going to take care of the company the nominee so you mention the nominee in the memorandum of association itself understood everyone yes can i change the nominee 100% you can change the nominee i have no problem at all next can you see the screen yes can you see the screen yes, yes. there's something very interesting who can be a nominee who can be a a uh, member in case of opc i'm still discussing opc itself let's assume bill clinton sitting in usa wants to start an opc in india what do you think anirudh what do you think can he start bill clinton sitting in usa wants to start an opc in india can he start an opc can he be a member in no, that sir. opc yes sir why no why yes only a natural person who is an is, indian citizen mm -hmm. and nominee in india stayed in india for a period of not less than 120 days during the immediate to preceding financial complete confusion in this statement don't worry we are going to learn it together can i start for you to become a member or a nominee too much to digest for the day don't worry it might sound too much of law it's okay i will revise and you will realize that we haven't discussed much nevertheless for you to become a member or a nominee in case of an opc you have to satisfy three conditions you have to satisfy three conditions what are these three conditions you have to be a natural person you have to be an indian citizen third condition is you may be a resident in india or you may not be it's okay with me i don't care given that everything is online now i don't care whether you are a resident in india or not let's understand this law what am i talking about raghavendra wants to start an opc can he do so law says you can provided three conditions are satisfied diksha wants to be appointed as a nominee can she become a nominee she can provided three conditions are satisfied sir what are those conditions natural person the person be it a member or a nominee has to be a natural person understood second thing that member or nominee has to be an indian citizen so can bill clinton start an opc in india can bill clinton start an opc in india answer is no he is a natural person but can he start an opc in india the answer is no why he is not an indian citizen third condition he may be a resident in india or he may not be now who is a resident in india what is the meaning of the word resident anyone what is the meaning of the word resident Stays the person india. who has stayed in india he should have stayed in india how many days 10 days 120 days not less than 120 days. days it's not 182 days earlier it was 182 days now they have changed it it is 120 days the problem is when should i stay in india when should i check this 120 days in the immediate previous year financial year or financial financial year? Year. Financial year. financial year financial year now for those of you who still counting stars let's simplify the entire law please note please note i am discussing about who can become a member or a nominee in case of an opc law says a person who is satisfying any of the or, or, a person who is satisfying three conditions can become a member or a nominee not just member i'm talking even about the nominee i'll i'll ask questions immediately after this the first condition is he should have been a natural person second condition is he should be an indian citizen third condition is whether you are a resident or not i don't care whether you are a resident or not earlier it was a mandate that you should have been a resident in india now law says sir working online work from home you can do anything from anywhere why should i break my head whether you are a resident or not 
you stay in africa and do business you are indian a citizen you are a natural person but you are sitting in africa and doing business is that okay 100% okay 100% okay but the confusion is sir whom do you call as a resident okay whether you are a resident or not i don't care but who is a resident tomorrow if someone ask what is your answer a person is called as a resident provided he has stayed in india he should have stayed in india how many days 10 days no not less than 120 days. days 120 days so when should i check this 120 days this year last year when should he stay in for 120 days in the immediately preceding calendar year or financial financial year? financial, year. financial year. Uh, immediately preceding financial year understood everyone understood everyone yes or no yes here with the concept three conditions opc you can become a, a member or a nominee provided you are a natural person indian citizen or whether you are a resident or not i don't care who is a resident resident is a person who stayed in india for a period of not less than 120 days in the immediately preceding financial, financial year is there a difference between calendar year and financial year what is yes, calendar sir. year what is financial year what are the same first january to december is uh, calendar year what is financial year april to april march is financial year oh, now sorry. look at look at just this difference friends if i would have just told year 120 days in the immediately preceding year which year sir which year look at the precision of the language appreciate how much of depth that you guys are learning if i just say a year you will say calendar year i will say financial year you will see your convenience i will see my convenience if i want to start i will say january to december if you don't want me to start you will say april to march yes or no law said wait i know this confusion will come up let's keep it simple 120 days in the immediately preceding financial year why am i being so precise about financial year is because earlier the law used the language calendar year in 2020 they came up with an amendment they said sir no calendar year and all simply it will create a lot of confusion use the word financial year itself understood everyone yes whatever we learn we learn with the history whatever we learn we learn with the history earlier it was calendar year law realized that there was a lot of issue financial statements are prepared from april to march calendar year is january to december calculation which one what should i follow law says don't want follow financial year as simple as that understood everyone yes so let's quickly spend two minutes in revising whatever we've discussed because i don't want you to go home with the thought that there's so much that you've learned no very simple we started understanding section 3 section 3 says you can start a company it has to be for lawful purpose if you want a public company get seven or more persons who are going to be the subscribers to your memorandum who are subscribers the first members of the company are called as subscribers understood if you want to start a private company get two or more people two or more persons who are going to become the first subscribers if you want to start an opc get one person only one person or minimum one person only, only one, only one person. person understood then we went on to understand what is a private company section 2 clause 68 defines private company means a company which by its articles has three important points what are three important points there's a restriction on the transfer of shares there's a limitation on the number of members and there's a prohibition from getting public subscription understood yes then we went on to understand opc which is defined under section 2 clause 62 opc means one person company which has only one person as its member Whenever there is OPC, you have to ensure that in your MOA, you're also giving the nominee's detail. Why? So tomorrow anything happens to that one person, who is going to take care of the company? The nominee. Now the confusion is, is OPC a public company or private company? It is a private company. Whatever law is applicable to a private company, same thing applies to an OPC as well. Who is giving this answer? Section 2, clause 68. Very interesting connection. Just keep connecting dots. All right. Who can become a member or a nominee? A person who is satisfying three conditions. Natural person, Indian citizen, and a person whether resident or not. I am not really bothered whether you are a resident or not. Sir, but the confusion is, when do you say someone is resident? Tomorrow, if someone is asking you, I am a resident or not is okay. But when do you say someone is a resident? 
that person should have stayed in India for a period of not less than 120 days. When should I check this 120 days? No confusion at all. Last financial year. In the preceding financial year. Simple. Understood everyone? Understood everyone? Yes. yes sir. Apart from this. Apart from this. We are going to discuss in the next class what exactly is a public company. Very, very interesting definition. In detail, we are going to discuss the proviso. For those of you who want to get a quick flavor, Section 2, Clause 71 defines a public company. Public company means not a private company. Does our definition stop there? No. There's a proviso, quite interesting proviso, which we are going to discuss in the next class. All right, friends. I hope you guys are comfortable with the approach. You guys are comfortable with the with the pace that we are picking up for our classes. Are you guys enjoying? Yes, no. Yes, sir. Yes, right. sir. Enjoy. Yes, we sir. Will structure it. We will. You will find it a little more structured probably once you get your material. Right now, you don't have your material, so you might find it a little difficult to even coincide with whatever we are discussing. If you realize in today's session, we have brushed upon our basics because I am not going to touch upon any of these basics later on. All right. So I don't mind investing first five hours on our basics, get our basics absolutely strong. And then we start building our layers on that. All right. Go ahead, Abhishek. Quick. Uh, sir, it's regarding the conditions of nominee. Go ahead, sir. When we, when we say he may be a resident or not. So why we have to check for the residential, I mean, uh, the time of not less than 120 days. The point is earlier, even before now, the law is saying whether you're resident or not. It is because of, really, if you ask me, the reason is because of COVID. Now, everyone is working from home. Connect dots, connect the reason. All right. Everyone is working from home. So, it so happened that people started their OPC. All right. But at one point, or people had plans of starting their OPC, but they were not in India. Let's assume they went back. Someone is sitting in Africa. He is an Indian citizen. He is a natural person. But he cannot start an OPC in India because he is not stayed in India for 120 days. Are you guys understanding? Law said, don't, don't even break your head into all of these things. Whether you're a resident or not, I don't care because now everything can be done online. Everything can be facilitated online. You can sit in Africa and do a business in India. Possible. So I will not get into the residential status. No, sir. Still, I want to know tomorrow if someone says, asks me who's a resident, at least I should have an answer. Whether it is a resident as per income tax, resident as per companies act, which act should I even refer to the definition? This section itself is making clear. This section itself says resident means a person who has stayed in India for a period of not less than 120 days. When should I check 120 days? Immediately preceding financial year. As simple as that. Understood? Okay. Sir. Yes. Go ahead, right. Pratik sir. Quick. Uh, sir, uh, in a private company, uh, can you please explain about uh, employees and uh, ex-employees in numbers? Very interesting. So, Pratiksha, let's assume there are, you know, you have given your time in the company. Now, for the purpose of this 200 calculation, just for the purpose of 200, mind you guys, this entire discussion comes into picture just for calculating 200. All right. It says, for the purpose of this 200, if you are an employee, I have given shares to you. Why? Because you are in employment with me. You have given your sweat to the company. You have always ensured that the company is doing well. So, I have to appreciate you. I will give you salary. Good. Apart from that, how can I get more interest of yours in the company? By making you the owner of the company. Yes or no? That's why companies issue ESOPs. What are ESOPs? Employee stock option plans. All right. Company gives you shares. As an employee, you get some shares in my company. For the purpose of this 200, I can't consider you. Imagine like this. You, I might have thousands of Pratikshas in my company whom I have given shares. If I start including you guys in this 200, I will breach the limit on the day one itself. I don't want to take that chance. All right. But at the same time, law wants you to be the shareholder as well. Law wants you to be the owner of the company. Maybe not complete. Even if it is fraction, even if it is a part of it, it's okay. So I will include you for the purpose of membership, but not for the purpose of calculation of 200. Understood, Divya? Yes. Whether it is, uh, I mean, Pratiksha, whether it is present employees or past employees, don't really be bothered as long as you have got the shares because of being in employment. Divya, go ahead, quick. Sir, in the exceptions of illegal association, why the law uh, limits the, uh, except, why the law given exceptions to only for HUF and uh, part professionals? Is there any logic? Logic is because if you see HUF, now we believe in hum do, hamare do. Yeah, now we believe two people will, you know, keep their family short, small by giving birth only to one person or two members. If you see now families have become too small. At one point of time, it used to be joint families. If you realize at one point of time, the families used to be huge. Even now there are a few families which have 200, 250 members. 
and they are all in one business entity which is called as huf so law recognized that i can't you know keep them aside because that will break the structure of hufs so let them continue because at the end of the day they are all part of one family itself if you see they are all part of the same family it might be brothers it might be brother son it might be brother son 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 all right continues forever so i don't want to remove them from the entire structure let us keep them in the entire discussion as an exception understood yes divya the word uh, professionals professionals now professionals if you see professionals have been kept aside because they might not be regulated by that that specific partnership act they might not be regulated by the companies act but at the end of the day these professionals are regulated by the respective bap example chartered accountants are regulated by icai company secretaries are regulated by ca icsi so there is someone who is going to control i don't have to really break my head in that case understood that's why law has kept it aside understood yes go chandramouli sir when we talk about shares given to employees does it include laborers sir definitely employees means a person who is on the payroll of the company who is an employee a person who is there on my payroll now laborer it might be a contract laborer contract laborers are not my employees they are someone else's employees will i include them then no sir i mean even factory laborers sir 100% yes laborers okay. are included um, as long yeah. as they are on my payroll as long as they are coming in my employee list they are my employees as simple as that whether Thank it you, is sir. factory laborers yes. it could be you know blue collar job white collar job don't really bother they are included all right anything else anything else that's it so we have exactly 8 minutes friends what we are going to do is i'm going to give at a very very macro level whatever we have discussed till now i know i'm revising probably the, the third time but this is how you remember law all right we've discussed section 464 which talks about illegal association we have discussed about section 2 class 20 which talks about what is a company section 1 which talks about applicability of companies act very very important section all right then we saw section 2 class 68 which defines the private company we saw public company section uh, uh, we rather saw opc which is under section 2 class 62 which defines what is an opc we started with the concept of public company under section 2 class 71 i haven't touched upon the proviso yet because this is another very intricate uh, discussion which we are going to have in the next class all right so this these are the important sections make it a habit right from day one in the last page you make a note of all the sections every class we will make it an endeavor i will be randomly picking people and asking you the section titles this is how you will be able to score real good marks in law if you ask me you have to be extremely clear about the language and the section titles at one point of time if you ask me in ca foundation i myself would have told it's okay you don't have to recall much of section numbers but at ca intermediate stage it is mandatory to know the section numbers there's no option even if icai says there's an option of not remembering i will not give you that option is it hard no i will ensure that we revise it on a daily basis you will have to put in 5 10 minutes every day after the class to recall every section all right last page of your 100 page note you will have to keep a separate notes for law because i will be dictating time and again a lot of things last page you will have to make a note of all the sections that we have discussed on that day i don't want you to write down the entire section just write section 2 class 68 definition of private company section 2 class 62 definition of public uh, opc something like this has to be readily available i will be randomly picking people all right given that this is your first class i know most of you are tired all right i know it's been 3 hours that we've been learning law it is theory at the end of the day i will not deny that so i've just tried to keep it as engaging as possible don't worry uh, maybe we'll we'll make it a little more structured from next class when you have your notes all right or maybe whenever your notes are ready put in your efforts from day one i still remember one of my students you know uh, the immediate batch whoever cleared the intermediate uh, i got a mail from that person so that person says sir the only way that person got maybe if i'm not wrong somewhere around 70 plus or 80 plus so whatever the mark was that person just makes a statement that sir i was able to sail through with real good marks in law because right from day one right from day one my efforts were consistent in reading not just the con uh, content but also ensuring that i remember the section title all right you will have to read law from day one friends 
lot of revision is required for law. If you ask me, even today, when I attend any of, when I take any of your sessions, now it's been quite a lot of years now that I've been teaching. But having said that, not quite a lot, but yes, it has been a couple of years since I've been teaching law. Even till date, even at a CA foundation, forget about intermediate, even at a CA foundation class, I prepare and then attend the class. I prepare and then take the class. Irrespective of how many ever batches I've taken in the past, I still make it a point to read because I don't know which student will come up with what kind of doubt. The same way you don't know what ICI can come up with any time. Yes. So you will have be you will have to prepare on a very regular basis, consistently, you know, applying your time in this paper. This paper is a paper which can give you 80 plus. Trust me, this is one of the papers where you can score easily 80 plus, very easy, as long as you're reading on a daily basis. On a daily basis, if you're reading this paper, you will be able to sail through. All right. So probably I'll end today's session with a very interesting uh, story. So there was a guitarist, all right, the one who plays guitar, uh, supposed to be one of the famous world renowned uh, guitarists. So he goes on the stage, all right. He had broken his leg. So basically he was handicapped. He was, he was uh, differently abled. So he had broken his legs. He was not able to walk, but somehow, you know, because of practice and blah, 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 he was able to get on the stage. It took 15 minutes for him to set himself ready for touching the guitar. Forget about playing it. It took 15 minutes for him to get himself ready, sitting on the chair, getting his clamps, cl uh, crutches and all of those aside, sitting comfortably, all that starts. He starts playing the guitar. All right. So it so happens that when he starts, the rhythm was so beautiful. The music was so enlightening that everyone started enjoying it. It was a session of, it was entire, the play, entire play was of around 60 minutes. The sixth minute, the sixth minute of the show, he has just begun. His strings get clamped off. So his strings come out, it breaks. To keep it simple, it breaks, all right? Now, how can you play a guitar? So there are six strings, all right, in a, in a normal guitar. So out of those six strings, three strings break. They come off. And you're sitting in an audience of lakhs together who are just waiting to listen to you. They paid thousands together to listen to this music. Now, he has another 54 minutes to go. And he can't say that I'm done. Because people have paid. They're not going to allow you to move out. Yes or no? Now, he has 54 minutes. He has to play this broken guitar. He has to play this guitar which doesn't have strings in it. Out of six strings, three strings are out. He is just left with another three strings. How do you play? He sits peacefully. He takes a deep breath. And then he begins playing the guitar with three strings only. And he gets to become the biggest of the biggest guitarist of the century because of that performance. So there's an interview. Of course, people might want to know what is happening. How did you even get to this stage? So there's an interview. In the interview, it's asked, what did you do? Just with three strings, how were you able to make? He says, the music was not <clears throat> with what I'm, uh, the music was, was, the music that I played was not based on what I came with. I played the music with what I have. Too deep for you guys to understand, I'll break it. The music was not what I played, was not something that I played with what I came with. I played with what I had. All of us might have our own series of problems. All of us might have our own series of distractions. How well you can play, how well you can do the best with the available resources is what counts. All right. You might have your own financial problems. You might have your own economic problems. You might have your own distractions. You might have thousands and several reasons for not doing something. It's not because of what you couldn't do. It's always that is respected out in the world is in spite of all what all odds were you able to still make it. That's what is counted. All right. Will not take much time. Guys, 
put in your efforts right from day one chartered accountancy is not bcom chartered accountancy is not second pu where you can just do it for the sake of it no you will have to put in efforts from day one and trust me you will come out with flying colors with this i come to an end of today's session hope you guys enjoy thank you so much and let's catch up in the next session thank you so much once again thank you sir thank you sir thank you sir thank you sir